Hey gamers, welcome to a brand new DSP style video. We're gonna watch everyone's favorite segment, the gaming news segment, because my god, my god, just just wait till I get a load of it. Get a load of this. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to get into gaming news. And today we've got a million, a million topics. Like, it's so ridiculous how much happened during my day off. I, I just can't put up with it at this point. Can we fucking stop the bit of, wow, guys, gaming news comes out on my day off. Like, okay. But he also reported a lot of gaming news when it wasn't his day off. Like, come on. All right. First of all, a ransomware gang is claiming they have hacked. Oh, this is great. As DC was doing this, I was watching a, a Meerkat style restream, right? Correct? And he was doing a fact check segment on DSP's little news reporting on the ransomware. And Meerkat found an article that was published 16 hours ago, like pretty pretty early on in the in the Google search. We got more information about the ransomware from Meerkat than DSP. All DSP reports is just Little headlines on Twitter and little sound bites, and then he just talks about generalities and just what could or couldn't happen. Like this dude, is, it's so lame listening to his fucking news sometimes that the only enjoyment is when he talks about something he hates, and it's not like oh wow he really hates it. It's just he hates things for the dumbest reasons you can even imagine. But but that, we're getting a little too ahead of ourselves now. Let's let's get into this games. They're saying they have 200 gigabytes of internal data, including emails, passwords, full names, Whoa. possibly addresses, payment now, information. Uh, now, I think with this, with this story, I think what Meerkat found out that they, that they said that there was no like real evidence that this happened or anything like that. And I don't, I don't remember if uh, if it said that it, that information is coming from Epic themselves, which is like, of course, they're not going to say. Uh, they're trying to control the, the uh, damage or whatever. I mean, they could still be assessing what it was really taken or whatever. I mean, we don't know yet. Uh, but they're saying like there's no there's no evidence of anything going on. Whatever. It's like okay, straightforward. But DSB didn't even update the news and just says, oh, this happened and guys, it's terrible. And then he just goes on and on about it. Like, what kind of news is that? Like, this is the kind of news he shits on people for doing. Oh, they're, they're fear mongers. They're creating clickbait and all this other stuff. And it's like, he's bringing up a news article and he's kind of talking about it in a negative, like, fear mongery way. Like, okay. Source code and more from the company. And they are trying to hold them hostage. I mean, this is very reminiscent. Remember uh, that a similar thing I happened? I can't remember. With, uh, was it Rockstar? Was Who was it that it happened to? No, I can't even remember. I think it was Rockstar, right? Or was it somebody else? I can't even remember at this point. Because this seems to be something that happens like five times a year now. Right? Dude, and it's funny because... Hacking happens. I mean, like... There were times where it even happened to Capcom. No one really talked about that. And then it's like, oh, now now it's a thing. I mean, it's a, it's a big deal. I mean, when a big company gets hacked, that is like, you know, holy shit, whatever, etc. Like, usual stuff. But... We don't know the full story yet, I don't think. I think right now is just, it seems like nothing's, you know, nothing is uh, compromised yet or whatever. And it's like, okay, like, let's see where this goes. But DSP is going to harp on, like, oh, dude, people got hacked, man. It keeps happening. It's like, yeah, I mean, hackers want to hack. I mean, they're going to hack whatever. Like, this isn't the first time this happened. I mean, Sony got hacked uh, multiple times. They got hacked in uh, Portal 2 days, whatever, on PS3. That got PSN got taken down then. Uh, they got hacked again. Uh, that's how, you know, during the interview movie, you know, come on. Come on now, dog. We were just saying recently, oh, it was Insomniac. That's right. It was Insomniac, Insomniac. after Spider-Man came out, right? right? And it's just so weird because how on earth are all these companies being infiltrated like this? It seems like a prominent issue now in the modern day. Yeah, probably but it they didn't. wasn't. Recently, like, like it's, just be... it's just obvious. Like, not a lot of companies take like they don't spend a lot on cybersecurity. Like, you know, people. I I feel like I mean the thing is like it's not really a rare or a hot take, but I I think you know more companies should take cybersecurity a little bit more seriously because it's to me I feel like they're not taking it seriously enough. Like it's just kind of like okay, we'll do the uh, the authentications and all this stuff, but they don't really like. 
you know, go that far ahead because they probably just don't want to be spending a lot of money on that, whatever. But, you know, it's a, it's an important thing because everything is digital now. Come on, think about it. Years ago, this wasn't happening. Now, all of a sudden, this is happening, like, constantly, right? Right. And especially with Epic Games, you got to understand why, why this is such a big problem. I mean, Fortnite. Fortnite! Probably the biggest microtransaction game besides maybe GTA Online. So, they probably have, no exaggeration, millions of customers' pieces of information just from microtransactions of that game. Most kids play Fortnite in oh, some man. capacity kids. and spend money in it. So at the very least, their parents' information is present on these Epic Games servers. I like how he, he singles out like the, the parents and all this stuff. It's a weird thing to say when it's just just customers. This ain't people. Uh, you know, it affects everyone. I mean, come on. Hackers are claiming they have it. So what happens now? <laughs> I don't know. But I mean this what happens huge... now? He doesn't even know what happens now. But again, we're reporting this news because, guys, it it, it happened. It, it's scary and all this other stuff. But, dude, like, if all you're going to say about it is, dude, it could happen, this could happen, that could happen. I mean, of course these things can happen. Anything can happen. Problem for them. You know, if any of this information gets out, they get hit with a class action, right? They're fucked. So... I'm and curious and who's happen. he reading these news stories from? You know, he doesn't really cite anything he fucking reads. Like, oh, is he afraid of us knowing where he gets his stuff? Oh, he gets it from Twitter. Yeah, I can read a lot of dumb fuck opinions on Twitter. Like, who who is he getting these opinions from? With this, and if they're going to give in to demands, or if they're just going to say, fuck this, we won't play ball with, you know, basically terrorists, which is what they are. And uh, and go from there. And then but, we say we say this like the terrorists. I mean, they're just hackers, man. But, uh, or whatever. Why okay. is this happening so prominently? Rockstar with the leaks, Insomniac. I mean, the thing is, he should be asking himself: Is why is this happening more? Like, I mean, come on. I mean, we're in a digital age, guys. The inter the internet age. The and now Epic Games, because Insomniac was the leak of Wolverine. Remember the Wolverine game and had the playable demo and everything. So what's going on here? I just What's going on? I'm at a loss. Like, what is going on with security? Right? You would think that a major company like this would have some, you know, some good security. In effect, how are these hackers getting into these companies' files? I would love. I would be fascinated to hear how they're doing it. Are they? Using Why would the same you be fascinated? Over and over. <laughs> is this a brand new tactic, and no one's foreseen that it's this happening dude. That, that way? No like one has he, he's acting as if it's some phenomenon, dude. It's just hackers. They they can do a lot of a lot of shit. And a lot of companies do a lot of dumb shit, too. I mean, there's really that one time where uh, I don't know if they ever changed it. I might have to look it up. But if you type in, like, OBS on Google and to try to, to download OBS, you have to be very careful because there's a link that's, like, not real OBS. And you install it from that, from them, you'll get, like, malware and shit. Like, that's how easy it is because they – and it was, like, a sponsored link, too. So – more and more, people are finding other ways. I mean, hackers can find their way in a lot of the ways. When there's a will, there's a way. Combat it? Like, what is going on? What's going like, on? This is just a recurring thing that seems to be just common now, right? I just don't know. Fed Rogers says a lot of people are saying it's because a lot of people are working now from home. I mean, I guess I can see that. But but the thing that's kind of like... See, when, when, when people say like, oh, it was because they're working from home, I kind of, I kind of like, question some of that. Think Because... People, things were getting leaked before, like just as much. It's as now we're probably seeing a lot more articles and more reports about it because more people are hacking. But who's to say that working from home is is the one hundred percent culprit in this? I mean, there's a lot of like businesses that work from home. Why isn't everyone getting hacked? I mean, like what you know? I I don't think it's it that's necessarily the case i mean it could be i'll be fair to say it could be but i don't think that's that that's it because i mean this has happened before and it could always happen again i mean when you say stuff like that then you have to move back into this into the company you really got to ask yourself well if it if it leaks again then are we sure it's it's the work from home angle <laughs> you know what i mean but if you're going to work from home why, again why is there no security like even if you're remote working I mean, you got to log in. No. 
I mean, no shit you have to log in. I mean, the thing is, like, a lot of these hacks are far more intricate than just, oh, you, oh be sure to log in. Like, it's really to the point where people just say, don't, don't trust two-factor authentication with text message. I mean, that's not, like, foolproof. But I, I don't think anything's foolproof. I think, like, you, all you can really do is just, just have the most, like, hoops. And then, you know, that's going to, like, do whatever. But you're never going to truly be hacker-free. If a hacker wants to get in, they'll, they'll get in. Like, you know, it's, they're hackers. Come in. Really, what is, what is going on? I really am I'm interested to know what's happening here with the situation. I mean, is it a work-from-home situation and they're exploiting this? I don't know. Um, all right, let's continue on because we have a lot of news to talk about today. Um, okay. Rockstar Games has put out a company-wide message stating the following. Oh, get, get a load of this. All employees must return to the office five days a week starting in the month of April. Why? Why? Well, as you know, since COVID, a lot of these companies have worked remotely. But what Rockstar is saying is that basically due What to are they saying? They say they all have to come back to work. What are they saying? What are they really saying, Phil? The fact that they have had so many issues with Grand Theft Auto 6 up to this point and keeping security. I mean, this goes hand in hand with the story we just had about Epic. They want to make sure that the game is locked down because they are now heading into the final development stages of GTA 6. So for security and productivity reasons... They are forcing employees to work physically at work instead of remotely. And apparently, employees are not happy. They're pretty Whoa. upset because I guess a lot of them are working. Wait, you're telling me that, that people who liked working from home and not in, like, cramped conditions would rather stay home and work? Okay. Under Shocker. the impression or premise that they were going to al be allowed to do this remote work. Oh, so... And this dude is Mr. Professional. All these other people he makes fun of. Oh, they're not prepared. Oh, they do this. He fucking was innocent and stopped in the middle of it and started putting his fingers in his mouth. Dude. Sometimes, like, I, I can let, let it sometimes slip when it's like, okay, he's watching a, a video on his React channel. He's playing a video game. I mean, it's it's crazy. But at least it's like something's going on. But he's dead center in the middle of the camera, and he's just like, this is the perfect time for me to shove my finger in my fucking mouth. And I guess I can understand if you're not in an immediate situation where basically you can do that, like get to work easily. I mean, I can understand how this is going to throw your life on its head. Um, so I guess the real question, because someone in chat just said, well, how is this legal? It depends on the employee's contracts. It's exactly what it depends on. I mean... I, I think it's fine that, that, you know, they're saying, hey, at least they're giving, like, at least some time to prepare. But I, I, I think personally, you know, whatever, it, it should be up to uh, the employee. And I think there should be, like, if, if, the, if the employer wants them to come back to work, they, they can give them incentives. Like, oh, uh, you'll get higher pay or whatever. Like, they, they give them something. Give, the, give them something uh, that will make them want to go. But if they want to stay home and work, I mean, they're staying home and work. Like, they could find other incentives to get people to go to work and, you know, whatever. They don't want to do anything crazy either. You know, I, I just think it should be at least an option because that way, like, you'll have, like, a reasonable amount of people working or whatever. Maybe schedule it out. I don't know. Figure something out uh, so that they can at least, uh, you know, have the option. I, I don't I don't really like the idea of just saying, okay, you all must come, come into work and you absolutely have to. It's like, well... They're making games fine before at home. Like, why not just do that and have it be an option or whatever? Like, you know, like they could be a little bit more creative with this, with that idea of working from home and make it a little bit more reasonable. But, you know, it, it's really hard to, <laughs> to trust corporations sometimes because they, they probably want to like make sure that they're paying only attention to them or whatever. But, you know, you know, you know, it is what it is. So if you are a contracted employee, a salaried employee in your contract there's going to be terms that outline what is expected from you as an employee of the company and they they have to give you certain things look how long look how long this is taking oh uh, it depends on the contract see when you agree to a contract there's terms you have to abide by and there's terms that they have to abide by we're literally explaining a contract 
different things for them. That's the two sides of the contract. Oh, my God. Them. However, in the United States of America, we have what's called at-will employment. And this is a problem. This is a problem. Okay, what's the problem, Phil? Tell us the problem. Because at-will employment, it was originally designed. Okay, we're going right, to, okay, all right. To give power to the employees. Because all right. what used to happen was uh -huh. you would get into a contract with an employer. But then an employee okay. would want to leave, but the contract would state that they can't leave for a set amount of time. Okay. With this and this and this. Right. And because Correct. of that, the employee would be stuck. In uh -huh. a life situation where they have to keep working for a company they don't want to work for. Almost like not a slave because they had to get paid. But still, imagine okay. if the company says, well, we don't want – we know that you're a talented employee. And we don't want you working for another competing company. So we're not going to allow you to leave our company. You're stuck with us for a long time, right? Okay. That's what they would do. Wow, that's so awful. Is that the problem? It's supposed to be a law that fixes Okay, that's that. not the and problem. What the at-will employment okay. says is basically thus. A company can fire you at any time for any given reason – uh -huh. Except one deemed illegal, such as racism, sexism, and okay. stuff like that. All but right. As long as it's a reason that's a, a, a qualified reason for termination, they could terminate you at any time. Okay. As an employee, you have the ability to work for a company and leave whenever you want. You don't have to work a set amount of time. There's no such thing as a two weeks notice. It is a myth. It is a professional courtesy oh my God. that we do here in the United States that if you're going to quit a job, you give your job two weeks notice you're leaving. So they have two weeks to try to figure out what they're going to do to replace you or maybe shuffle okay. your job responsibilities around. But the All truth right. is there is absolutely no legal repercussions for not doing that. You could just quit and walk out the fucking door and there's nothing anyone can do about it. If you Okay, so what's the problem? People can quit? That's the problem? I mean – like, think about it. If DZ was in a position where he wasn't able to quit, he'd wish he would have that ability. But now we have that ability. Oh, oh well, this is a problem. This dude, this dude, man, it's something Art else. Employee, okay? And I'm still waiting for the problem. He, he brings up that there's a problem with this law. And already he lists a benefit. And then he's like, okay, so, so, so is that the problem, the benefit? The employee can quit? That, that's a problem? Is that the problem? So the intention is full flexibility. The problem is, since this law is so loose, Rockstar can literally say, well, we've now decided you have to come back to the office. And if someone refuses, Rockstar could just find an excuse and fire the person. And there's nothing but that anyone... What? You know, I, 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 maybe I'm dumb. Maybe I'm really stupid. What is the correlation with that and, and the at-will employment? At-will employment, he just said, like... It's so that they can't just, uh, you know, keep you from quitting. Like, you you can quit and you can leave. And, and, you know, you can't, you're not allowed, like, you know, whatever. What he just said. And all this other stuff. And that people have to fire them for, like, reasons. Like, them deciding to stay home, they could say that's a reason. So, you know, they they were they were going to fire them anyway if they stayed home. Like, you know, like, everyone is, is expected to work. And then, like, whatever. They could, they could say whatever. But, okay. What can do about it? Now, of course, that person can sue Rockstar, but they'd have to prove in a court of law that Rockstar somehow violated some kind of a law or agreement or something like that. I'll give you an example. I worked for Best Buy for about one year. This is a dumb example because it really, it, it really just... It doesn't. It's not adequate, in my opinion, because this story, because what he just, what he was talking about with Rockstar was just a situation where they're like, "You're coming back to the office." They're like, "I don't want to go back to the office." Like that, that, that is a like a whole thing, and it's like it's it. You know, an employee can argue it's it's completely reasonable to do that because they've been working from home for years and and all those other stuff. Like they can make a case as to why they should be able to do that. Um. Uh, and the company goes to make a case saying, no, you have to come back to work, whatever the fuck. I mean, th th it's, it's a little bit more nuanced of a debate, in my opinion. This Best Buy story, it's, it's just fundamentally broken because they wanted to get rid of a, a department because they probably saw it as redundant or they just didn't need it. So they're like, okay, we're, gonna, we're just going to leave it. DSP refused to leave. So what are they going to do? He's, he's not going to – they offered him to get highly certified so he could be paid more. Or they would give him a job that's lower end or whatever. And he didn't want either. So it's like, of course, they're going to probably like lay you off or fire you or whatever, because you're not 
you know, they can't keep you. Because they're not going to be able to pay it. It's mostly a laid off thing, it sounds like. But whatever. They hired me on a business team. So they paid me more than like there, 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 this. This Best Buy story, I there, there's a lot of holes. I feel I kind of, I kind of question a lot of it. Like DSP is not a very good storyteller. Like I might need an ALT stream of this one. I think he might have done one actually. So everyone else in the store, yeah, watch it because I was supposed to be selling servers and high end equipment. This was the mid two thousands, by the way. So almost twenty years ago, this happened. Then the company decided six months into the program, they didn't want to do it anymore. So they were trying to force everyone in the business team to either get like high-end certifications or to downgrade your position to a lower paid position in the store because they didn't want to have the business team anymore. So you either were going to be like an installer for Best Buy at a high end or you were going to be like a line level employee and get paid half. I refused. I said, I'm not doing either. You hired me under this premise Therefore, I'm going to stay in this job at this level, no matter what. And there's nothing uh, you can do about it. Nothing you can do. I'm going to stay in this apartment. You're going to close. Mr. Uh, person who works above me. Yeah, D DSP has the authority for that. Unless you fire me, in which case I'm going to sue you. This dude is such a little bitch. Look how much of a bitch he is. They're like, hey, man, you want to be paid more? Like, do this little thing or just be paid a little bit less and... And all that. I want to stay here. Do you fire me? I'm going to fucking... I'm going to sue you. This is like... This is the guy that is like the poster boy for why the, the lawsuit system is fucked up. Because this dude would sue you for the smallest of infractions. Oh, he slipped in your store? He's calling the lawyer. He ain't calling the cops. He's calling the lawyer. He's not calling the ambulance. He's, he's making sure the lawyer is involved before the ambulance can take him away. Like... That's the kind of guy DSP is. He's he's Mr. Karen. He's the king of Karen. You know what? That's what he's the king of. He's not the king of hate anymore. He's the king of Karen. So what they did is they framed me. They actually said that I had violated the store's discount policy for buying three PlayStation 2 consoles at a 40 cent discount each. Guess what? They fired me for it. I went to court. I won easily. He, he's missing... Uh, I, I definitely think he's omitting a big part of the story because I think he, I, I want to say he told us that he did the employee discount because it's only against the discount if he were to buy it to sell it. Like, and he wasn't going to sell the PS2s, obviously, but he was going to use them to run tournaments, which I don't know. If, I, I wouldn't necessarily know if, if it was profitable to even do that back then, to be completely honest, but it was for a, a, uh, another purpose than just kind of having them or whatever so best buy was like they probably knew dsp pretty well to know what he was going to get those ps2s for and was like yeah this is kind of a, of an infraction but dsp benefited from the judge not knowing about tournaments or anything because on paper it probably looks really like okay why are they fucking doing this for this amount so of course the judge would probably favor him because it's like you know this is like nothing and and best i could probably afford to pay him anyway so who fucking cares but it was probably literally just the judge did not know that he was going to use it for tournaments so he was like hey that's that's fine with me but best i was like no he's using it for something else he's not using it for the intended meaning or whatever the judge laughed at them in my hearing, <laughs> audibly laughed, and said to Best Buy, did you really think that someone would actually willingly risk their employment for $1.20? Are you stupid? Well, DSP does a lot of things that are stupid, to be fair. Anyway. Anyway. Um, the point I'm making here is any company in the United States will find a reason to try to get rid of you if they want to get rid of you. So... Right now, with Rockstar demanding all employees must come back to the office for the final leg of GTA 6, what if a third of the employees said, well, no, we don't want to do that? They'd be like, okay, bye. We'll find a reason. We'll just fire you. It doesn't matter, you know, what the reason is. They'll just figure out a reason. You know okay. what I mean? That's how companies so, like, are. The oh, whoops. I didn't mean to do that. As an but again, this is DSP News. He gets a news story saying... Hey guys, uh, Rockstar uh, employees are gonna have to go back to the office within a month. Like that's the news story. DSP just says, "Well, guys, look," and then the law is this way, and then like it could be like, "What's all these people could be fired, man?" 
Like, all all this is is just him. And, and this is, like, bullshit. He wants to relate everything to himself. Because he thinks if he can relate to himself, he has an idea of what to say. And it's and that's so, like, ridiculous. Because it, there's always a time and place about having experience or, or relating to something. But just knowing something doesn't necessarily mean you can relate to it. Like, I can research a lot of stuff. doesn't mean I relate to what I research. It just means I did some research on something. But this dude is, like, doing this, all, all this. And he's like, well, see, like, I was laid off and it was, like, fucked up. And all of a sudden, it's really bad, man. Like getting job layoffs, man. Asset in their portfolio. They see you as a number on a spreadsheet, a wheel, a cog in a giant machine. They don't see you as a person. So a company like Whoa. Rockstar could easily say, listen, the whole industry is cutting back. And if you're not going to listen to us when we tell you to come to the office, we're just going to let you go and we'll find someone else who will do it. And they probably will. So the employees are upset. Well, I mean, think about it. All these people got laid off. They, they, they have a home if they, if they go to Rockstar. I mean, come on. Because they were under the impression and were basically promised. And these other people, like, them. like the thing that's like really fucked up though, if you think about it, all these people who, let's say they decide to do this and then they get fired or laid off or whatever the fuck, they they can't get another job. Like, what are they gonna do? Go to Sony? Well, they just laid off like thousands of people. Are they? They're not gonna get a job there. Same with Microsoft. Like, you know, it's it's really wild. What's going on? Home, and now that promise is being based. But it could, anything can happen. Who up. knows? And of course, the other leg of this is if they're already being forced to come back to the office to finish GTA Six, and the premise is oh, privacy and security, we can't have anything leak. What's to stop Rockstar from saying, well, you're already here, so you can't go back home ever again? You know, you're always working here from now on. No remote work ever again. They could do that. Now, this is the other thing I, w I would I would I that I feel is missing from the news story because he him saying that is is insinuating that they're not saying that oh this is temporary or whatever. So what did Rockstar say about having people go back to the office? Is it are they saying all employees must go or is it just like we're gonna allow our employees to come back to the office and we'll still offer uh, work from home? Like is it that kind of deal? Like we don't know. Because again, DSP like gives us like the cliff notes. A, a very, very like it's so cliff notes you question if the actual thing is about the thing it's about. Like that's that's where we're at with DSP because he's so unreliable. And this is why I, I DSP DSP news is such a dumb fucking segment that it's kind of funny. Because this dude, you listen to a news story from him and you're just left thinking there has to be more to it. Like this this sounds really weird on its own you know every time every time like dude i remember when he report on tears of the kingdom i was fucking confused because i was like is it not an adventure game because he was like oh it's like minecraft and uh fortnite and i was like what game is this like what and then i watched the trailer for myself and it's like oh oh they're just showing a mechanic in this game Okay, and it made more sense. He is terrible. He does. You listen to it, you just wonder if there's more to the story. And, and I feel if you're telling news and your audience is sitting there saying to themselves, "There has to be more." You're a bad news teller. You're a bad news anchor. You shouldn't be watching the news and saying there has to be more, right? Like you should at least be able to get like an idea of what they're talking about. Like, sure, you're not gonna get the full story before. A, a plethora of reasons but you at least have an idea and then you can take that idea and do more research and get more information but you're not doing that with the intention of like i don't know what, what's going on I, I thought, like there has to be more like it's more of just like oh this is going okay i need to find out uh you know a little bit more about this you know you listen to these layoffs and maybe you want to look more, more into it you know whatever all this stuff is just stuff that's on the internet uh really have no power to stop it Right? Right? So there you go. Um. Anyway, so I guess we'll see what we'll happens see. with this final push development, all right, of GTA 6 and what kind of, you know, news we'll get out of that. Uh, next story. Remedy Entertainment, the makers of Alan Wake 2 recently, the makers of Control, the makers of Quantum Break, and many other games over the years. Oh, boy. Have officially acquired the full... Dude actual property rights to the control franchise from 
the Control franchise, you know, the, the franchise DSP fucking hated. He said he did not like Control at all. And now he is, like, so excited for Control 2. He's so ready for it. 505. Get you want to know why? So he can finally point at Control 2 and be like, dude, it's Alan, man. Alan's there. Dude, that saga. Whoa. Dude, the, the fucking you know, Quantum Break reference. Whoa. But when when was when control was a new game, oh this this game sucks. It's stupid. Games previously, I guess it was like shared, but I guess remedy now with the hit that was Alan Wake 2, and the fact that they now want to make bigger games, better games, and they want to have oh. that shared universe oh between boy. control and Alan Wake, they wanted to make sure that they fully owned the rights so they could do whatever they want with the franchise, and they have obtained it, right? Look at this, look at this, look at this. He was talking to the camera. He saw Felix the Maid. Uh, a little chat post. OMG, your Best Buy uh, court case is on the internet. What the? <laughs> get, get a load of this. So, pretty cool. He, he's locking eyes. Right. He, he, he saw Felix the Maid. He saw him. Okay, now he's going back to pretty the, the story. Cool. Pretty and, darn uh, cool. Now he's back at looking at Felix the Maid. He's, he's locking eyes. With Felix the maid, he's looking at him, and and he's locking eyes. He's like, wait a second. I certainly hope that they do a good job with it because control was good, but not as good as I wanted it to be. The plot was amazing. The gameplay was meh, repetitive, and not that fun. If they can refine the gameplay to make it better, then control will be great. And I'm I'm actually excited for a sequel to Control because it will tie in with Alan Wake too. I mean, oh boy. there were ridiculous amounts of reference. Look at, look at this. He's so excited that they can reference each other. This dude is such a fucking consumer. This is, like, really? This dude is Mr. Like, oh my god, man. They can reference this stuff now. That's all he cared about. He He's only happy that, that these things can now be referenced. Not that, like, oh, we can get more of this game or whatever. It's that... Oh, now we can, like, do full, full-time full references. This dude, man. And that's why, like, he hated Starfield. Oh, Starfield's multiverses, and there's, like, nothing of interest. Like, I can't sit there and be like, dude, it's the guy from that thing. Wow. But this dude is so hyped for Control 2, a sequel to a game he fucking hates because it could reference Alan Wake. References in Alan Wake 2 to the, uh, the Bureau... Right, which is the name of the, this this group, this entity, this, this people entity? in control who are trying to solve these paranormal uh, things. Um, I guess we'll see what happens. But no, uh -oh. holy shit, what a lie he! Holy shit, who said who said it? Who said this? Oh, it was uh, it was Husker, Felix the Maid. I thought it was Felix the Maid. Whoops, because Felix the Maid mentioned the cord thing was was online, and Husker. He committed to, holy shit, what a lie. What about Best Buy? Okay, goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> goodbye. I guess we'll see what happens. Dude, but, he, he, right? he was talking about this. this. This group, this entity, these people in control who are trying to solve these paranormal uh, things. Um, I guess we'll see what happens. But And now he's dedicated to look at Husker. He's, he's looking at him right now. Husker, I'm looking at you. Holy shit, what a lie he told about Best Buy. Okay, goodbye. Bye. <laughs> 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 goodbye. Yes, I told a big lie. Sure I did. Anyway, sure I did. Um, I mean, so, there's a lot of stuff that was missing yes, in uh, that Control, story. I'm excited that they own it now, and I'm, I'm actually excited to hear what they're going to do with the franchise next. Dude, I want This new lean-in em emote, it looks so bad. It looks so bad. It, it, ju it just looks bad. Because half the fun, in my opinion, with the pop guard was that it just looked really goofy. Especially the vintage lean-ins. Like, look at them. Look at the vintage lean-ins. It's literally just his entire head covered by the uh, pop guard. And it's, like, the funniest thing. And then, like, you never saw it again. Hear more about this sequel, okay? Okay. Cool. Cool. We're back to saying cool at the end of things now. Because that's how um, we talk oh, here's, here's a good one. You ready for this? Are you ready for this? Get a load of this. Get a load of this. He's, he's he's perked up. The Last of Us director, Neil Druckmann, has said in an interview... This dude. 
This dude is mega petty about fucking Druckmann. He doesn't think that he has many more big games left in him. This dude begged, pleaded, cried. He probably like cried a cat every night. That he wants Neil Druckmann to not work in the game industry anymore. Like, it was his dream, his wet dream, if you will, that Neil Druckmann would not be in the game industry anymore. Neil says, I'm done with the gaming industry. And DSP is going to mock him for it. But remember, guys, he doesn't he doesn't hold grudges and he doesn't uh, hurt people and, and all this other stuff. He doesn't hold grudges and all that nonsense. But this dude is being this petty to fucking Neil Druckmann. Like, my God, man. Ugh. Oh, this is really too bad. Anyway, moving on, let's continue with real news. Um, now, okay. Now you think, okay, that's enough. At least, at least for him, that's all he has to say. Uh, no, idiot. When Now, I saw this news story early on, early on today, and I was like, oh, God. And, like, at first I was like, oh, man, it's so funny. This guy is saying, like, he's exhausted when all he did was work on, like, generic zombie games. Wow, hilarious. And, and, and the moment I hit send tweet, I just realized in the back of my mind, Oh my god, we are gonna get a fucking Neil rant today, and boy, I I wish, I wish he just said he's done with gaming, bye-bye, and then he went on to the next new segment, but no, no, we have, we have to have a Neil rant, we have to, because DSP for some fucking reason has a very, like, hateful relationship towards Neil, like, you, it, it's like, he's obsessed to hate this guy. Like, it, it is so wild to me. And this guy goes on and on about how the trolls are fucked up and all this other stuff. But literally, the way he talks about Neil is the way that he talks about us talking about him. And it's so obvious he's just projecting how he trolls other people or how he hates other people. Because this is what he's doing. Listen to this. Listen to this bullshit. No, I'll actually comment on this for real. All right. Uh, why does he need to? Remember, he also tells us that he doesn't waste time talking about things he hates. But but now he's going to talk about something he hates. Pretty cool. Basically, in the interview, here's what he says. So, when they were making games like Uncharted 1 and 2, okay? Okay. And what's hilarious is in the interview, as they're interviewing this guy, the way he's talking is like he was the one doing it all, right? Listen, listen to how he got to this conclusion. It, it, it blew my mind. I'm just sitting there thinking to myself, this dude is like in his 40s and he still doesn't know how to read. Like, oh, yeah, back with those games, it was a party atmosphere. Everything was laid back. We'd have late nights where especially like the multiplayer of Uncharted 2. We would just sit around the... And again, this dude goes on and about how he makes... He's so professional and makes a good news segment. This is like a hit piece towards Neil. Again... Neil can really just, like, you, you're thinking to yourself, okay, you know, Neil's done with games. Maybe we'll never hear about Neil Druckmann ever again. Well, guess what? He's going to be probably working on Season 2 of Last of Us, so we're going to hear about it when DSP watches Season 2. Okay. And then, no matter what, DSP will still bring him up, because technically, he should just have not said anything. Neil has not said anything in, like, months or anything that was, like, of no. There's a lot of other stuff that people are discussing about Neil, but that's, like, beside the point but he had all that's been go coming out of naughty dog was like last of us one remake last of us two remaster the multiplayer got canceled and every time that these things happened he talked about neil and it's like dude these are like completely different things to complain about it, it should not be this hard to say that last of us two getting remastered is a dumb idea and it's really obvious it's just a corporate decision like, it's not that Neil's like, we love Last of Us 2 so much, we gotta sell it again. It's just, someone at Sony probably was like, hey, if we do this, we'll get more money. People will buy this because they love remakes and all this stuff. It's probably some shit like that. The same tier level thinking when all these Sony games started to have a director's cut in the subtitle now. Same kind of shit. Off is playing this game to the wee hours of the morning, enjoying it, tweaking it a little bit, and all of this, right? And it's like, what's hilarious about that story is he wasn't, the, like, really fully in charge of any of those. Now listen to this. See how, how, how very reductive this is? And kind of, you know, if, if you want to be negative, and I'm going to be fucking negative. 
it's kind of insulting to the other people who worked on the games because Neil is just a, is just reciting or just telling the story of just how it was like working on those games, just working on those games. He did from what from his own quote. Nowhere did Neil really say that he made the games. He just talked about how it was like when he was developing the game. Anyone who worked on a game can say they developed the game because they worked on it. Like, that's why, like, some people give, like, Super Blind Man a lot of shit because this dude was, like, he kept in his, like, uh, Twitter profile something like Last of Us 2 uh, Accessibility Consultant. And it's, like, it's a consulting job. Like, you're not, like, a, a real-life employee of Naughty Dog or anything. You're just a consultant that you're going to be, like, asked about stuff or whatever. And so, like, that's why it's a little bit more funny when Super Blind Man just kind of talks as if he was working alongside people of Naughty Dog. Meanwhile, you know, all the people at Naughty Dog were working on the game, but Neil saying that is apparently taking all the credit. But DSP is, is single-handedly giving all of the credit to Neil anyway, or just giving it to the directors of these games. The director of 1, 2, and 3 of Uncharted and all that stuff. Only the director can say that. But anyone else who worked on those games, they might be stealing the credit, apparently. Like, this dude is ridiculous. But th again, as I said, that's like a very negative spin of what he's saying. Because it's so lame to sit there and say that what Neil is, sa is saying is that he's taking all the credit. When all he said was, yeah, we worked on this game. Like, you know, we did a lot of cool stuff. Like, eh, like come on. Games he's describing that he claims were the better games he would he would share responsibility with many other people who no longer work for the company he forced them out because his and then we get like this this accusation that neil drogan forced people out like the only the only story i heard about that was amy heading i think that that happened and it's like okay like at least you know amy heading said that whatever but dsp is making me believe that there's like a whole group a whole fucking group of Naughty Dog developers or people that all were forced out by Neil. And it's like, I kind of find that hard to believe that Neil, like, forced more than one person out of a company like that. You know, like, it's just, it makes you question the fucking story. And again, this is a problem when it comes to a news segment. Someone's giving you the news and you're questioning the, the news, t the, the storyteller. You're questioning them off the bat. Because you listen to the quote that he gave, and then you hear all this other stuff that he's getting from it. It's like, where is this information coming from? And how is this relevant to the story? The story was that he is done with um, making video games because he found more passion making movies or whatever. Like, that's the story. Like, and he's talking about all this other stuff. Like, is that really necessary? Basically, was that... He was going in a certain direction with these games, and these people wanted to go in another, and he basically was like, well, it's my way to the highway. They said, well, then we're leaving. We're not... But, like, everyone does that in a game. Like, if he's the direct... See, this is really stupid, because Neil was the director of Last of Us 2, and all these writers write stuff. It is very natural for a director to cut scenes off to say, well, this isn't the direction that we wanted to I want to take this, because... He's the director. Like, what What do you think their role is? I mean, yeah, it's a collaborative project, but usually the director has to kind of give the, the project a vision. So if he's taking everyone's story and he's combining it with his vision, it's not going to work. It's going to be a hodgepodge. So, of course, he's going to say, well, this isn't going to work. We're going to have to cut that or not do it. Okay, this is going to work, so we're going to do that. Like, that's... I mean, the director does a lot of stuff. I mean... And again, this dude, see, this is the other issue, the other, the other problem of the many. He has no experience in anything because he's not interested. Like, I may not know a lot about filmmaking, game development, or anything like that, but I have at least somewhat of an interest in something so I can kind of understand how, why something is made or why something may be done that way, whatever, like... If you're interested in, in a medium or something that you want to talk about, you're gonna you're gonna know stuff about it. DSP has, it wants to be a gamer. He wants to know all this stuff, but he doesn't know anything. And he's masquerading as if he's an expert on this stuff. Like, oh, I'm a gamer, so I know what good game design is. Like, but he he keeps talking as if it's so easy to make a video game. Like, oh, get us pump it out. I don't know if it was Meerkat or Tevin that mentioned that DSP said that he wants AAA games. To be made every three months, to release every three months or whatever the fuck. And that's completely unrealistic. 
because you're gonna be crunching the develop the uh the developers to paste to do that like there's a lot of stuff you can read up about like how things are made and you're gonna realize it's not like a short process or a process that you can just kind of squeeze and get something good out of it like come on come on up with you you're like a giant ego you're an egomaniac we want nothing to do with you good luck and we're gonna go do our own stuff and so i believe there were two people who were also in charge of those games in charge of one and two that is who left after that and kind of left the the real story was uncharted 4 was a completely different game oh my god and then dude god, every we, game every game was different from when it was started like this dude acts as if it's such a bad thing but dude that's the story of so many games MGS2 was going to be way different than when it than what came out. Like, it was going to be... It, instead of the tanker, it was going to be an airplane. You wonder... And, and you already know why it was changed. You already know. But it was a completely different game. Shadows of the Damned was a completely different game uh, from concept to completion. Like, all this stuff happens in game development. There's stories out there, and it could change for many reasons. For good and for bad. But this dude acts as if it's only bad that this stuff happens. And it's like, it happens for good reasons too. The original, the original script of something can also be worse than what came out. Like, all that stuff is possible. But th that's how creation works. And he's like acting as if this is like a new revelation that, oh, so, oh they changed what it looked from what it was. Like, of course. Pulled under Druckmann's watch to be what it ended up being, which by the way was a great game, but that basically the studio then when those people left, completely turned direction and that's why you've got the last of us one that's a completely somber serious oh tone. my god i fucking despise how much this dude holds last of us one like i feel everyone when that game came out everyone was talking about last of us one like this oh it's such a meaningful game and all this other stuff but once the honeymoon period is over i i say you know the latest was when the remaster for the ps4 came out people were just like yeah, it's a good game, but, you know, the story is, like, actually, you know, it's kind of generic. It's a good story, but it's not, like, you know, earth-shattering earth, earth shattering or anything. And people realize what it, what kind of game it was. DSP is the only dude that never made that realization that it was such a meaningful story. And it's like, does he really know why it was meaningful? Like, I kind of question uh, if he really understood the game. Because I, I, I question a lot of what DSP uh, recites to me talking about really interesting plot lines like what's it like in a post-apocalyptic situation where people are dying left and right from these cordyceps this is unique and and, and groundbreaking uh you know <laughs> what are the human relationships like in that situation right. Th this is oh my god i did a take of this of this video before and you know i i had to stop recording it and now i'm re-recording re it guys i changed the video Oh my god, dude, something must have happened. I fired uh, my twin brother, that's that, you know, and he's gone. <laughs> you know, he's not gonna, nothing's gonna happen now, he's gone, he's gone for good. <laughs> but no, uh, no, no, guys, okay? This dude literally shat on Lasso Sue for having these other, like, cliche, teen angst nonsense stuff, but he's hyping up the first game for having relationships. So, let's get this straight. In Last of Us 2, it made no sense for Ellie to be in a relationship, but it made perfect sense for Joel to be in a relationship with Tess and, and like, uh, feel whatever when Tess died, right? Correct? Oh, God, he fucking spoiled Last of Us 1, guys. But it's like, dude, come on. Come on. These games have, like, very basic stories. But, and, and I'm so tired of, like, this this comparison with Last of Us 1 and 2. They're very different games. And I get that people dislike, too. I... I don't like to, but there's stuff I did kind of, like, appreciate or just kind of, I kind of liked. And, and I know it's, like, a very uh, polarizing thing, and that's fine. I'm not going to sit there and say that anyone's wrong for not liking the game as much for the stuff that I like it for, or whatever. But this dude talks so much about it that it's, like, move on. And the stuff he says isn't even, like, thoughtful. It's just buzzwords. Like, what's teen angst? Oh, uh, Ellie was flirting with this other girl. Okay, but, like, Lazo Suit also takes place in a settlement that's, like, completely privileged. There's electricity, there's water, there's all this other... It's a whole community. So, it would make sense for her to find the time to be in a relationship because 
they're not going place to place. They're they're settled. They're settled in. Like it, it's really not that deep of a concept, and and no one really cared. It was mostly just that the revenge plot is generic, and it just kind of uh, pissed people off because they killed Joel in the beginning of the game, I, and. and I said this before, like, I think it's fine that he killed Joel off, maybe give him a little bit more time, but I think the act of killing him is fine. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. It, it's kind of like how you really do it. And, and I and I get the pacing uh, debates about that, too. But th these are all old points, and we're still talking about it. Like, this is what's so annoying. Every time he talks about Neil, we always have to talk about Last of Us 2 because this dude cannot get over it. It's 2024. It's it's as passe and fucking lame as people still debating The Last Jedi. Like, dude, the movie came out. It's it's already old news. Move on. There's other things to complain about. Like, just move on. Right? Take a look at the, re the relationship between Joel and Ellie in that game and all of that. And it's all about survival and emotion. And then Last of Us 2 just becomes a very generic piece of revenge again last of us who's generic but not the first game the first game is just as generic to all the way down to the soundtrack the soundtrack is good don't get me wrong but it's like you've heard that kind of soundtrack before like come on angst teen very teen angsty teen angsty. game where everyone's like, a well, dumbass what is teen angst because they they, they fall in love this dude, I, I really hate that this fucker is sitting there like d d just criticizing romance in general and saying that it's, it's a teen angst thing. Like, dude, romance is a real thing. People go through it. I mean, dude, it, it's blowing my mind. He is shitting on Last of Us 2 for having romance in it when, like a dragon, Infinite Wealth literally deals with the relationship shit. Ichiban proposes, Psycho turns him down, and he's like, oh, fuck, I, I need to talk, I, I need to apologize, and she's like, it's a little weird that, that he, he proposed so early, I, I don't know, and, and it, they deal with that, the end of the game, they deal with it, whatever, it's like, but, but, we have, I've not heard him say, oh, this is teen angst, man, Uh, Ichiban would never do that, like, where, where's that passion, oh, because, is it because it's not in your face? Like, come on. Come on. People acting out of character from the first game. Basically, you could tell... I was out of character. Ellie was a teenager in, like, Last of Us 1. Who, obviously, wouldn't know shit. Like, Ellie's not gonna know, like, what it's, what's it like to have a relationship. Because, you know, she's a fucking kid. Uh, she's older than Last of Us 2, so of course she's gonna grow. And she's gonna be like, oh, you know, maybe I maybe I could be into, into other stuff whatever but this dude acts so fucking stupid about it it's not even the sense of like oh i uh, about him being a prude it's just he, he it, it's just the notion of like basic romantic subplots that he makes him feel uncomfortable but since last of last of us infinite wealth doesn't really focus on the romance between ichiban and psycho that much it's like who cares? But when anytime romance is brought up, he just gets he, he gets so he's so ready to leave. So ready to clock out. Oh, someone else wrote Last of Us 2 versus Last of Us 1. Yeah, it was Neil Druckmann. He wrote part two and the plot of part two, in my opinion, was atrociously fucking bad. Not even close to how good Last of Us 1 was because he wrote the whole fucking thing. And the people who wrote the good parts of Last of Us 1 aren't worth the company anymore. How does he know that? How does he know that he did everything in Last of Us 2? But everyone that was that wrote the good parts left. How does he know everyone left? They moved on, right? So, right. Basically, Correct. he says in this interview, when what when we were making the old games, it was like a party atmosphere. But basically, once we started making games that were expected to be giant blockbusters for Sony, it sucked all the fun out of it. And this dude, he's like, oh, I'm I'm a content creator. I create and all this stuff. He doesn't relate. To the notion that once this stuff, like, it kind of goes in line with what he said. Like, oh, man, if I did this for the money, I'd be so burnt out, man. I'd be so terrible. And Neil Druckmann is saying the same shit he would, he would say. And he's like, oh, this fucking idiot. Like, not at all being, a re like, relating to this. Yeah, like, this dude. <laughs> I, I'm Ichibot. I am. I should be allowed to state a fact. But the one guy that can recite something that he that he relates to, 
Oh, no, I can't relate to that. Only the fake characters, please. And he even says, you know, recently when I've been working on other projects, like The Last of Us TV show, or uh, there was something else that he recently did too, and I can't even remember what it was. But basically he's like, that stuff was so much more fun. And, and Why is he mocking this? Neil Neil Druckmann is putting out an opinion that he that he found more he found more excitement out of filmmaking than video games, and he's sitting there mocking him for this. But man, if you mock him for doing what he's doing now versus what he did back then, oh man, you're a fucking idiot. Get banned. Interesting to me than making these games. So I think that basically, like Last of Us Three is probably the last one for him. To which I say, good, please. As soon as you can, I I wish you the best. Look how look how this is like Christian level of cringy madness. Like as if like he has power. Like like Neil Druckmann pissed him off to the point where he has to say this. Like why? Get the fuck out. Let people who have passion for games make them. Who don't have agendas. Let people who are actually. Gonna this is so so fucking lame and and baby brain. Is hey, good, please. As soon as you can. I, I wish you the best. Get the fuck out. Let people who have passion for... What if he had passion? And then he's like, I'm done. And he found a passion elsewhere. But the... Whatever. ...make them who don't have agendas. And again, he assumes that Neil Druckmann can, like, conducted all these agendas. All of them. It's not a team effort when it com comes to that, right? Correct? I better... I, 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 I can't wait. I really hope Loki, Last of Us 3, or, like, the next game after that to be safe is like super political like oh the main character is uh uh is joe biden and and he's on his way to the white house and cordyceps are attacking and, and joe biden guys he puts on the sunglasses and he's like i i dark brandon and then he uh he has to get his little like uh um rascal scooter or whatever the fuck and he, he just like carts around and he says blah, blah, blah. then there you go that's that's what he does and then, like, he, he finds love along the way with uh, Mike Pence or some shit. Like, he, and then they, they go off in the sunset. That's the end. <laughs> Let people who are actually going to make meaningful games make meaningful games again. The games you have made oh my since God. you took over the studio have been dog shit. No, really. They've like, been way I just, I just want to be so political or whatever that he has to explain to us. Why Why is there such an agenda in Naughty Dog still? Neil Druckmann left. Why do they still care about agendas, man? <laughs> First in the games that came before, you really going to make Wait, meaningful games, make meaningful games again. What? What's meaningful? What's a meaningful game? Last of Us 1. Well, no. <laughs> the games you have made since you took over the studio have been dog shit. No, really? That's his opinion, by the way. They've been way worse than the game. I just love he says this is my opinion. It's okay to disagree. They're dog shit, okay? They're dog shit. You gotta admit, they're dog shit, Neil. But guys, it's okay to like the game. It's okay, man. It's, it's just his opinion. That came before. You ran The Last of Us into the ground. You made a TV series about a post-apocalypse that doesn't have zombies in it besides one episode. This is really lame. It's about a post-apocalypse like what's to say it's about zombies specifically and i just love that we're just saying zombies now about cordyceps i thought they were unique and special and not generic like zombies the you know like you're terrible you know and there's there is a group of people who like what he does because of the way he goes about his stuff with his leftist agendas. And I hate, I hate how he, he talks about, like, liberal or people who are, like, left-leaning or liberals are, like, the fucking sheep. I mean, you can, uh, anyone can make that argument about anybody. I can make that about Republicans, liberals, uh, DSP fans. I can go on and on about just assuming an entire group of people I have no, no critical thought except for me. I could easily do that, but it's dumb to do that. Because I'm like, f what, 34? Yeah, I'm not going to say dumb shit like that and say, oh, yeah, pff, everyone's an idiot. Like, this dude is so fucking lame. And he's like, saying, like yeah, these liberals, they're going to buy these games because oh, pff, he likes liberal stuff. I mean, come on. Come on. That's, that's not even true. So if you like that content, follow the guy as he moves on from games. But please just get the fuck out of games. Because I keep saying this, we don't need politics in our video games the whole point oh my god of a video 
This is so lame. It's such a lame, lame brain take. And it's like, I, I've talked about this enough. I, I, I understand that people just don't like how curves are written and presented and, and all that stuff, which, which is fine. It's just that when I just hear political, it's just like I can't really take it fully serious unless I know the person I'm talking to. But it's like, look, you could say anything is political. Like Metal Gear Solid 2 is a political game because it deals with governments and society and all this other stuff that's like all political like stuff involved in it which he likes by the way he loves Metal Gear Solid 2 but it's like there's all this other stuff like what's like even with Last of Us 2 let's take a look at that where what is the what's the agenda what's the the politics in the game in the game because the game is just a revenge story that's really all it is, and and I and I seen a lot of people who dislike the game. They start to have more of an opinion. They have more of a, of information as to why they dislike it. And I've seen people go from like, oh, this game just looks stupid. Then they go on and say, oh, actually, like you know, I don't like the way it's paced. I don't like this. I don't like that. And, and people moved on. And there's some people that even might say, hey, it's you know, it's not a good game, but you know, it's kind of fun. Whatever. There's all this stuff you could say about video games in general, but it's like I I never really quite got. What is the prop the propaganda or the agenda that's in the game? I mean, it has a revenge story and all this other stuff that you can kind of dissect through whatever. But to say it's liberal agenda, it's kind of like what what's the basis? Because there's one character that's trans, like that that's that's the uh, the smoking gun. Just one character, like that's just a character, and it's not even a, a central focus. It was just a more of a a, a um. A moment for Abby to get to go through and all that other stuff. It was part of the story, but it's not, it wasn't like the central focus. It wasn't like, oh, this is like what we're working towards. It's just a vehicle in the, in the game or just like a, uh, you know, just development for a character. I mean, it's just stuff like that. And this dude is acting as if like the game went out of its way to say vote for Biden or whatever. And it's like, no, come in. Real game is that we're supposed to be able to escape all of the drama of our real lives, right? And, and I, I hate this ar argument too because people can get can like find relaxation by playing games that make them stressed or whatever because maybe that helps them cope. You know, a lot of people play games for many different reasons. And again, if DC is going to argue that video games are art, he's going to have to accept the fact that art can also make you feel like shit. Art is not a a vehicle for one emotion or oh it's it's designed to make you go into a far off land or whatever art is anything the artist wants you to see it's just whatever it's it's a very ambiguous thing because it's whatever the person makes it to be it, it can be hurtful it can be uh relaxing it could be anything it could be about anything you know that's why like a clockwork orange is is a artful movie because it's a movie that is not a uh, standard film. It's not a film that's like, okay, the, the good guy wins, the bad guy fails. It's a movie with fucked up people, and it's a, a very, very fucked up movie. Uh, and there's other movies like that. I think I think uh, the movie uh, House that Jack built is also pretty fucked up as well. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of fucked up films out there, and it's like, yeah, should we discredit these films because it makes you feel fucked up? No. I mean, sometimes it's fine to feel fucked up by the media you, you watch. If you don't want that, then yeah, you know, you you shouldn't be in, uh, like participating. But it wasn't even that Last of Us 2 kept it a secret. They told you, yeah, this is going to be a fucked up game. It's M-rated. It has blood. And, it's, and you know, they've been straightforward about that, except for Joel. But, you know, again, the, the tone, they were straightforward about. Like, oh, this is going to be fucked up. And it's like, you're complaining that it's fucked up? Okay have a good time together enjoying a fantasy i don't need to play a fantasy and say oh well now it's all about politics this group and that group and this representation listen to this enjoying a fantasy i don't need to play a fantasy and say oh well like what does this have to do with last of us now it's all about politics politics this group and that, this group, that group I mean, technically, if we're gonna be that ge that general, you can even say every single video game under the sun is political with that requirement. Because in uh, Pikmin, there's that group, and then there's that group. You know, you have the red Pikmin, the yellow Pikmin, and the blue Pikmin. Then you got the enemies. Then you got the bulb group. Then you got the ball blacks group. Then you got this group. 
these are all these are all political analogies, and I'm not gonna tell you what is what. You you figure it out. You figure out the Pikmin uh, analogy that Miyamoto baked in. A group and this representation and this spin on this and this is misogynist and this is this, this is misogynist. This is fuck, but but <laughs> off, man. Now That's it's all about politics. This group and that group and this representation and this spin on this and this is misogynist and this is this and this is fuck you off, man. Fuck you off, dude. He's getting mad that people could say, "Oh, this game's misogynist" or whatever the fuck. These are like criticisms people can have, like. I, I, I'm not going to go into like more like little story time or like little anime rants about stuff to make a point, but it's like people could just watch something and, and find something that could be misogynist or they could find something that they don't, that they think is a little problematic or whatever. These are just criticism that people can have about media that they, inge that they fucking watch. Uh, and, and, and that's, and these are just discussions. Is he really complain blaming the game for having people have conversations? Like, how is that the game's fault? You're blaming Last of Us 2 because people are sitting there saying, oh, uh, this person is misogynist or whatever the fuck? Like, that, that's, like, not the uh, fault of the game. That's just, the, that's just people. It's, it's on them. If you're allowing an entire group of people on the internet dissuade you from something that you like or enjoy, that's, that's a you problem, buddy. Like... I, I could I play Last of Us 2 and I didn't let the the uh, Twitter noise make me feel bad about it. It's like hey, look I played it and I have an opinion of it. Whatever it is, what it is. Like you know it, it it's so lame. It's like the same shit with Hogwarts Legacy. As much as I don't like that game and I would love to see that game get burned and all this stuff and gone, whatever. But I'm not gonna look down on people who just want to play the game and and buy it. Like I may disagree about it and all these other reasons with it, but you know th that's just my opinion of it. And this dude is like he's let like he's letting the outside noise that like sway his opinion. And it's like just be your own person, Phil. Come on. I hear it all day. All day, every day, everywhere you go on the internet, on social media, everywhere you go in politics, you hear this constantly. I don't need to boot up my video game and hear the same shit from you. Because but what if what if they're just contributing to the conversation and people can like relate to the game story and have a better understanding of the topic at hand? Like, you know, that that's kind of why I I think a lot of, like, movies and uh, stories kind of relate a lot of real-world uh, politics because they want... It can help you understand the debate and all this other stuff. And this is massively ironic. You know, I didn't think about this before. I'm going to think about it now. This dude was bouncing up and down about Le Like a Dragon Infinite World being so relatable. Dude, it's so timely. Wow, man, they, they're handling this from COVID? Wow. Oh, dude, it's like me fur fur. And, and he's sitting there saying he doesn't like that Last of Us 2 has stuff that happens in real life fur fur. Like, dude, come on. You can't fucking grow the fuck up and keep your shit out of your games. In fact, Last of Us 2... Dude. He watched uh, uh, Infinite Wealth, and he saw Ichiban go through the same shit he went through. Isn't that traumatic? Why do you want to play a game that makes you relive that, Phil? Don't you feel bad when internet online haters uh, ruined your reputation like uh, Tatara-chan did on uh, Ichiban? Didn't you hate that? So, like, why did you play that game? Oh, because it's, like, fun, wacky Ichiban guy. Uh, as well as it did because of it. If Last of Us 2 did not have those themes, it wouldn't have been Game of the Year. Sorry, that's just true. How do, how does he know? So, like, the, the Game Awards is funny to me because there, there were games that a lot of people were saying, oh, oh, this FromSoft game is not going to win. It's going to lose to, I think it was... Uh, Elden Ring won, I think, against... Uh, I want to say Ragnarok. I want to say Ragnarok. I think it came out the same year. Or Horizon or whatever. And people were like, oh yeah, they're going to give it to the Sony game. They're going to give it to this because, you know, whatever. And then they give it to Elden Ring. Like, people will always say that about awards. Like, you're never going to get, like, a unanimous agreement <laughs> with with anything. But, uh... But, like, how, how, did he, how does he know it wouldn't have won if it wasn't for the political themes? This dude is, is fucking cooked, man. Here, what anyone else says... That's the truth of it. Like, everyone was dead set that Baldur's Gate 3 wasn't going to win. 
and then it won. Like, I, I kind of just feel the whole point of these fucking game awards is just honestly just for marketing. And I don't give a fuck. Like, you know, f- feel whatever you want about them. And, and there, there's, you know, opinions about it. But it's like, come on. It was great on its own merit. But it was really that whole agenda that he had. Remember, if you Remember? buy Last of Us 2, a vote for Last of Us 2 for the game awards. That sticks it to the haters. That really gets those bigots. So do it. DSP has done this too. He he did a festival where he said that the the vest is a symbol of putting down the trolls or whatever the fuck, and and all this other shit. And he does this too. He 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 pins so many people against each other with him. Oh, uh, watch me because I'm not like those other guys that are like big and and they and they don't care about the audience. I care. Like that's kind of the same attitude of like stick it to the haters. You're you're just doing a different flavor i don't want that in games i want games to sell and be popular all right because they're good but what if it was gonna get the votes anyway like whatever not because of a fucking feel-good movement from some political agenda that the guy can't sell his games otherwise right and and, and And it's it's just goofy to uh to get this, like, again, a lot of people were, not, were, like, clowning on Neil Druckmann for that tweet. And and sure, it's a dumb tweet, whatever. But DSP is the only person on this planet who literally is acting like it was a personal insult. And we must, like, uh, send Neil to the death penalty. Like, he deserves the death penalty for making that tweet, apparently. And this dude makes so many bad tweets as well that he got clowned on. And he's like, well, I guess I pissed people off. I'm sorry, I'll take the L and all this other bullshit. All, all of they get people off his ass. But Neo, oh, he makes one bad tweet and he's he's part of the uh, the mob. The mob of hate. But it's like, dude, everyone's like, this is a dumb tweet. Wow, this dude's like clown land. And DSP's like, I can't believe he did this. And to this day, he's still talking about it. Like, move on. If you don't believe me and you think I'm making it up, he publicly apologized for it. Take a look. Whoa, he apologized? Wow, you know, it's so funny. I love it when DSP tells every day how great it is to apologize. People need to apologize. A dude apologizes, and you just know for a fucking fact. A fact. If he didn't apologize, DSP would say, So, like, Neil Druckmann, he uh, be a very stupid tweet about, uh, I'll vote for Last of Us 2 to piss off the bigots, okay? He said that, right? Correct. He then uh, never apologized. So, okay, get this. It's one thing. You say uh, something stupid, then you apologize for it. It's another to say something stupid and never apologize. He never did. Wow, it's so stupid, man. I remember when I was, like, starting off on YouTube. And Neil, listen to me. Okay, Neil? Neil, listen up. I got, I got advice. Listen to me. If we gotta like listen to anything, listen to this. I hope, I hope the trolls uh, clip this so you know what I'm gonna say. Okay. <sighs> when I was just starting out, I said something stupid. I said Minecraft is is for kids and and you're awful human if you played it. I said that me, yes. And I noticed years later, I started playing it. That is actually fun, meaningful, robust. Okay? And I then realized I was so stupid. I was so wrong that I apologized. I I respected my audience enough, enough to say, I'm sorry, I understand now. Minecraft isn't just a fad. It's it's so cool, man. And, and I always think about that after I stopped playing forever. It was like so meaningful, man. So, Neil, please listen to me and apologize for what you said, okay? And then, uh, you know, we can all move on, okay? But he's not going to apologize because he's Neil fucking Drackman. <laughs> you know he's going to do that shit. But no, he apologized and we still mock him for it. And this dude, it's so obvious. He loves the idea of, of people apologizing because he gets to, like, uh, dangle it over their head for the rest of their life. And that's why he's so afraid and adverse to fucking apologizing when he has to apologize he will do anything he can to get out of it 
Look at Lavinia. He was wrong about something, and instead of just apologizing to her like a normal person, he he baited her to get herself banned. He he kind of led her on to make sure that she would be annoyed, and then he would ban her for it. Like that's because DSP cannot possibly apologize. That's why all his apologies are fucking bullshit apologies. Like I'm sorry you got offended. Oh, I'm sorry I. I said something bad, but you know, I did this for reasons, okay? And all this other fucking bullshit. All his apologies are half-assed. And this dude is, is just dangling this apology because he truly, genuinely believes, probably, that apologize, apologizing makes you weak. It makes you a weak person. And that is so fucking, like... There's, you could say a lot of things about it, about the, this dude's, like, psychology. The fact he sees apologies like that says a lot about him. The end of that year, during the Game Awards, when he was campaigning on social media for people to vote for the game, to make it Game of the Year, and then he had to retract his statements and apologize for it because he realized how immoral it was when people called him out for it. So, shouldn't you praise him for that? He, he, he apologized. But he also claimed so that he thought he was like, fake too, so it's I like just, oh, I clown with him. I'm sorry. He does. I hate this guy. The king of hate. The king of hate has finally returned. Listen to this. Listen to how he says it. So that's what I mean. Like, I just I hate this guy. I'm and when he says he hates the guy, you feel the hate. You feel it. You. He says he hates him. You, you feel they we, we felt it because, man, every time you talk about Neil Druckmann, it is always a rant. Like, he hates Neil for some unknown reason. And I, I just love that this fucking guy, right? He goes on and on about people's downfalls, people's karma, and all this other stuff. Like, he had these weird segments about Tevin, like, oh, man, he pissed off the wrong people. And karma's gonna get him. And all this other dumb shit he said. And then when Rich was going, go, uh, having a low point, I would never say that about someone. But Neil, he's like happy to, to say that, he, oh, he's out of gaming. Good. Good riddance. Oh, fuck you. And all this other shit. And this dude is, is sitting there like, oh, man, I'm, I'm such a nice, cool fucking guy. <laughs> okay. Sorry. He doesn't belong in game development. He's ruining He doesn't belong. He's it political. I don't need politics Dude, in my Dude, he doesn't belong and he's making it political. But this is the same guy that says people should be able to make the games that they want. So him wanting to make a game that deals with politics by uh, explaining how revenge works and how dangerous revenge can be or whatever the fuck. Oh, th well, you know. Pff, okay. ...video game. What's sad about it is... Uh, Last of Us 2 was pretty much the most accessible video game of all time. Right? It did a lot of things good. <clears throat> you might say, well, that's great for games. You're correct. You're correct. However, because he made his game so political, how many people actually talk about that? This is so stupid. Dude, I, I, I think that year they literally invented a category for the Game Awards to award for accessibility. And guess what happened since then? More games got accessible, dumbass. He acts as if no one had these accessibility features anymore. Like, it was just Last of Us 2, and since it was political, no one, done, no one has done it. Games have been becoming more accessible. He fucking reported on it. He talked about how Street, uh, Street Fighter 6 is becoming more, more uh, accessible. All these other games are becoming more accessible. And this dude is talking as if Last of Us 2 sank the ship of accessibility. And it didn't. Because more companies are doing it. And they're getting praise for it. And he's like, well, yeah, man, this guess that's it for accessibility. Like, where's this coming from? Right? Right? After Last of Us 2 released, what was the next thing that Neil Druckmann did? Re-released Last of Us 1 for full price. What was the next thing that he did? Re-released Last of Us 2. What was the next thing that he did? Well, he made the television series. What was the next thing that he did? Well, I'm going to make a full-fledged multi- he, he, He's giving so much credit to, to Neil. It, it is insane. He's like, yeah, man, he did the multiplayer. How does he know he did the multiplayer? What if he was just there to, to announce it? And he's like, he worked on it. How do you know he did? Player game out of factions. Then he canceled it. What has he actually done? Nothing. He's sitting on his- He is this mad about fucking Neil, but he's not- he, He's- 
not mad at all about fucking David Zaslov. Yeah, you know, David Zaslov, that fucker. He, he had a great stream. He had a great streaming service. HBO Max was fantastic. Great selection. Great service. David Zaslov just slides in like the, like the fuck he is and ruins it. He single-handedly ruined HBO Max. He, he saw everyone was like, oh, the, oh, this service rules? You gotta take our happiness away. He made it awful. We have trash shows on that service now. Uh, he canceled a lot of shit. Why, uh, Coyote vs. Zack Me is uh, deleted and gone. He didn't even watch it. And this dude is like, oh, Neil Druckmann, what did he do? He made these games and canceled them. What did he do? He did more than what David Zaslov did. David Zaslov is a piece of shit. He ruined shit. He just, and the dude fucking merged with Warner Brothers and has no concept of the fucking properties he owned. He owns. He has no concept of the value. Like, dude, think about it. The government, like, started an investigation because he wanted to cancel a fucking Looney Tunes project. They're like, what the fuck? Dude, do you know what Warner Brothers is? You know, you know what, what a Bugs Bunny is? And this dude goes on and on about how he didn't watch Coyote vs. Acme. And it's like, dude, you, 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 you own Looney Tunes. And Looney Tunes made Warner Brothers, like, a household name. And you're, like, telling us you don't think that's going to work? Like, it's not, like, like Looney Tunes is not a, a printing machine? Like, dude, it's, like, really, like, someone owns Mickey Mouse? The newest one, not not the not the, the, the public domain one, the new one. And it's like, yeah, this looks stupid. Uh, Mickey Mouse? Who really cares about Mickey Mouse? Like, and then it's like, d dude, like, come on. It's Mickey fucking Mouse. Like, but no, we're not going to complain about that. No, no, no. Why would we complain about David Zaslov ruining a streaming service when we could just complain about Neil Druckmann every day, even though Neil Druckmann, like, is just doing his own life, I guess. I mean, David Zaslov has done more damage than Neil Druckmann. I'm going to say it. I, I said it. Yeah. David Zaslov has done more damage than fucking Neil. Yeah. Yeah, I went there. His pile of political laurels acting like because... Last of his two I, was I hate David Dasov. I hate him. <laughs> the year that he's like God's <laughs> gift to gaming. He's not. In fact, it's hilarious because in oh the Oh my interview, god, I'm just thinking of a DST a bit of like you know, just him just having a Neil rant with, with David Saslov. The cult of Saslov. <laughs> oh man, we, we have fun here. Let's, let's, we have to run this back because I remember this being fucking wacky. This pile of political laurels acting like because Last of His Two Then he cancelled it. What has he actually done? Nothing. He's sitting on his his pile of political laurels, acting political like laurels. because Last of Us Two was was made Game of the Year. That he's like oh, God's man. gift to gaming. He's not. In fact, it's hilarious because in the interview, he says, "Man, I really liked the directing a lot." Like he's basically saying he wants to be a director. Hollywood does not want Neil Druckmann. How does he know Hollywood doesn't want Neil Druckmann? Again, Neil Druckmann just started in the industry of course he's not gonna be well known leo leo dicaprio isn't gonna run to a a neil Druckmann joint he's not gonna give a fuck so like this is a, a very premature statement to make when he's just starting in the industry like it's more it's more appropriate to say that gamers don't want dsp in in, in their community or whatever the fuck and they'd be right because look at this guy at all all right. After he did his Last of Us season, and of course the critics said it was great because guess what? The critics are all leftist liberals, and they critical love or this guy. Well, I'm a, you know I'm fucking liberal, and I don't like fucking Neil Druckmann. So I guess I I'm the antithesis of your of your statement, Phil. The he tried to go and uh, the rounds. He went to all these events. What was it? I can't remember if it was like the Golden Globes or whatever. But he goes to this event. And he's thinking, I'm... No, I question the, the picture they, they got of Neil. Was it, like, an actual picture, or was it, like, someone there? And it was like, oh, look at this guy. I know this guy. And takes a picture. It's a public event. Anyone can just really just walk by and see it. It'll be the talk of the town. People are going to see me as the... This is so... Th this is, like, just seething. Seething! There's one picture. It just looks like a silly picture because he's by himself, like... When you when you see it in a war show, you know what it is, and you see one dude sitting by himself. It's innately funny. It could be anyone. It will just be innately funny. Like you could see Neil, like not Neil. Oh my God, uh, Leonardo DiCaprio by himself, and it'll be funny. It's like why is he by himself, huh? But no, we see Neil by himself because again, 
no one in Hollywood is going to be like, I know who that guy is. Like, how many Hollywood people know about game developers outside of Kojima? Like, do any of them know who uh, the guy who made Fez is? Sam Fish, I think his name is, or whatever the fuck? Do, do they know who the big behemoth people are? No. Do they know who Amy Heading is? No. They probably don't know, because it's a completely different industry. Guy who transitions video games from games into theater or, or television or movies. Like, I'll be the guy. I'll be the transition. I'll be the guy. No one talks I'll to be this the fucking guy. guy. They all were like, who is this fucking guy? They don't know who he is. Where, where did he get this from? Where did he know that Neil Druckmann was there standing in the award show thinking all of this? How, what, what's the proof? Isn't this the kind of thing that DSP says the trolls do about him and they're crazy and they need to go, be locked up? He's actively imagining a fucking scenario with Neil Druckmann right now. Like, but remember, guys, the trolls are the crazy ones. He looks like he's full He's posing for the cameras. No one wants a picture. No one interviewed him. No one cared. And again, he has never been to these award ceremonies. How does he know that, like, how many people get taken, get their picture taken who has made a show at these award shows? Like, I'm willing to bet that there are just shows of crew that just don't get their pictures taken and they go there every year. It, it just happens. Like, they're going to naturally take pictures of bigger stars because... Surprise, surprise, that's what's going to get the clicks. Not uh, Laura Sally, who made the show Bubba. Like, th that's not going to get any any pictures. But you have, like, Samuel Jackson show up there. That, that guy's getting pictures taken. Like, come on. It's not, like, it's not that hard of a concept. No one cares about Neil Druckmann except Neil Druckmann and his cult. And his cult. That's it. <laughs> this dude literally sees Neil Druckmann as I view Jared Leto. Because I don't like Jared Leto. I, I don't think he's a good actor. He can go away. And I think I, I, I even think Jared Leto has a cult too. So like it's it, it's he's doing this to the wrong guy. Honestly, <clears throat> I just find it hilarious, right? It, it, that this guy is so full of himself. You know, I just can't take game development. It's too hard now. Stop. And he's and he's then making mocking. Neil Druckmann for saying something that, like, almost everyone has said about making anything ever at all who get burnt out. Like, this dude acts as if no one gets burnt out in their careers. Like, come on. This dude is like, I'm, I'm so creative, and I love the creative industry, and, I, and all this other stuff. But he doesn't understand shit. <laughs> like, come on. Well, and I just want to direct. No one wants you to direct. How do you in know? In fact, I'll, I'll even say this. He you says this, but it's going to be, like... I hope when they announce another, like, Neil Druckmann movie or whatever, and it does very well, that people rub it in his face. But he has the cope of, it's the uh, uh, liberals. They are all loving him, and they are all giving him a job. Fucking liberals. Okay. You know who everyone would love to direct something? Hideo Kojima. Oh, my That's God. That's who people want. Dude, the MGS fans that attacked him have, like, created a, a fucking curse, a fucking monster. This dude is so fucking annoying about fucking Kojima. Like, Mega64 worked with Kojima, and they, were, and they don't, like, fucking obsess about Kojima as much as DSP does. Like, DSP is the, the guy that loves Kojima. He loves him. It's so insane. It's every day. Every time Kojima's in the news, he's like, Sir Kojima did this, and I love Kojima, and Dust Training was so good. But what's the ending? He never explained the ending. I saw him play the game, and he didn't, I don't think he got it. Uh, because it's fucking Dust Training, man. Come on. See, make shows. That's who people want to see make movies. Because the guy's games basically are shows and movies. And they're some of the most unique things you've ever seen. I would love to watch a Hideo Kojima television show. I would love. But dude, like... He makes stuff that also makes you feel things, too. I mean, come on. I mean, there, there's stuff in Death Stranding that's pretty good. Show or movie. I don't want to see Neil Druckmann do anymore. He sucks. He sucks. Yeah, because, I mean, movies should all make you happy and never think of anything at all. You should not feel uh, anything. When you go see a movie that's about uh, someone going through something uh, sad, that's a bad movie. They should never have any, any uh, issues at all, and they should all be happy. <laughs> so there you go there you go alright I'm done I'm not gonna rant anymore about this fucking jackass he already wasted enough of my time you chose right. to talk our about our final it. news story for today and no is the guys worst. it's not over don't worry there's more stupidity to come ah uh, yes DSPN does not stop until 
you hate life. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. You ready? Ready? Are you ready? EA Guys, Games buckle up. Is laying off 670 employees. What the fuck? We what just had fuck? a news story a couple days ago. So Dude, I, I, I hate how this guy covers fucking layoffs. I, I, I fucking hate it because it's, it, it, it is like ridiculous. He, he covered the uh, one about Sony and he, he, he Loki made it about console war shit. Like, oh yeah, people were upset about Microsoft and like it's Sony now doing it too now. It's like, yeah, I mean, it wasn't about fucking console wars. It's just. People getting laid off in that amount is insane. And Sony continued it. It's like, what the fuck's going on? And, like, everyone else, I think, has a better reaction to this, where it's more of just, like, like, it's kind of fucked up in a way that all these people are losing their jobs. And it's, like, it's not, like, oh, these people are, like, bad at their job and they're lo and they're losing them. It's just they're losing jobs. They're just laying people off in bit in droves. And it's, like... You know, and it's very obvious to me that it's just companies wanting to, like, save their money and not want to spend money on employees. So they're just kind of laying people off. And it's like, it may not even be for a good reason. They can say, and, and I, I also hate looking at these articles that interview the, uh, the company. It's like, what are they going to say? Obviously, they're, they're going to say, oh, we want to lay people off so we can reevaluate our company and our, and our beliefs and blah, 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 blah. But it's like, dude, you're you're laying people off. Like, it's very obvious that you just want to save your money. Like, it's very, very obvious. Come on. Five percent of their workforce, and now and he has the most goofiest excuse. Goofy, goofy is an understatement. Just listen. EA to this. Games is doing the same. Here's what they had to say about it. We are sunsetting games and moving away from development of future licensed IPs that we do not believe will be successful in our changing industry. This greater focus will allow us to drive creativity, accelerate innovation, and double down on our biggest opportunities, including our own IP, sports, and massive online communities. EA canceled the unannounced Star Wars FPS game that was in development by Respawn Entertainment that was supposed to be the Mandalorian game. Listen to that. See? They didn't believe in Star Wars The Mandalorian. They didn't believe in that IP and and re, and respawn. You know the people who are who like made Titanfall and everyone's thirsty after playing Titanfall two for another one. And it's like, dude, The Mandalorian is the one Star Wars property that's modern that people can actually that actually like. They may not like the new season. I mean, I I dropped off right at you know during season three. Uh, a little, little Disney rant. Uh, it's so stupid when shows. I do, I'm not gonna watch a show. The sec like the second they were like, oh yeah, you want to see what happens? Watch Book of Boba. I'm like, I'm not fu fucking watching that shit. Like, no, I don't need. I shouldn't have to watch another show to watch this. And I said, there's like, if they're gonna do this for this one time thing in, in Mandalorian, they're gonna do it more often. Fuck, fuck this. And I'm not gonna care. Like, don't don't do this dumb shit. I, you know, whatever. But maybe I would have been into that Star Wars game. But again, like, The Mandalorian is a, at least a safe IP, in my opinion, to make a game about. And EA is like, oh, we don't trust this? Which is, again, I think is all bullshit. They're just saying this because no company is going to say, yeah, man, we just uh, we just wanted to save money. We just we just got tired of paying people. Like, n no one is going to say that unless they're fucking evil. Unless they want to be seen as a fucking villain. <laughs> But no one's going to say that. Of course they're going to say, oh, you know, we're going to just do this because uh, X, Y, and Z. Yes, if you yes. can believe it. Ready? Ready? EA laid off the entire... We, we started the new segment, and he's asking us if we're ready. <laughs> okay. Entirety ...of the Battlefield Studio Ridgeline Games. This was the studio known for developing nar narrative developing. experiences in Battlefield. The entire studio was laid off. Whoa. Okay? Okay. And so, what they're saying in a nutshell, we don't want to take chances on anything good anymore. What we need to do is lean into the IPs that we know are money makers. So, more Madden. More... Yeah, because Star Wars is such a non-profitable... Uh, property. I mean, despite them investing so much in Star Wars in the past, and didn't even the uh, that Jedi game that came out last year sell pretty well? 
I mean, uh, may- maybe they got a little scared because that got a little, little clown clown buzz, but you know, I didn't get, but I didn't get as destroyed as Cyberpunk, and Cyberpunk was able to recover. I mean, I just kind of don't believe that they lost faith in Star Wars. That's a little too silly for me to like go along with. FIFA more microtransactions, micro games as a service, less good. Ori- Dude, it's fucking EA. It- he did another story about EA about how um uh, they 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 looked at that FPS game Axiom of a- Avium or whatever the fuck and how that didn't sell very well and it's like oh this is why we're going to do live service games and it's like yeah EA loves money they're not they're fucking they're a fucking stupid company like you might as well tell me that guy Theo Ubisoft they uh, they said something something stupid too and I'm like what of course e- EA and Ubisoft are like and Activision are like the the triple uh money grubbers the money the money people like I like, come on, come on, come on now, dog. Games. That's literally what they're saying with their public statement. And every time this stuff happens, DSP acts surprised that EA is this way. He's surprised EA wants more games that have microtransactions. Dude, EA, like, argued tooth and nail for microtransactions in many games. Like, Battlefield, ba- no, not Battlefield, Battlefront 2, when that came out, was filled with it to the point where, you know, like, they were arguing and they had to change the loot box system because it was i think it was semi illegal in like europe or whatever so they had to change it but whatever it's all these issues that are there and it's ea so when ea says dumb shit like this it's like yeah of course it's on brand for this stupid ass company and it sucks that people are losing their jobs but just wait until you hear what dsp like talks about this because it's it's something else okay now you might say i don't understand what is going on with gaming why is sony laying off so many people why is EA laying off so many people? Why did Microsoft just lay off so many people? None of this seems to make any sense, okay? Isn't the games industry profitable? I thought that we're hearing record sales numbers for video games. Again, I games- it's just corporate greed. Like, dude, it, it, it's like, that's it. Because, I mean, it's going to sound very political for me, but it's like we kind of live in a society that values... Uh, people making the most money possible and all this other stuff. When you get to like that point, it's like all you want to do is is just save as much and not spend as much and all this other stuff. And it's like you don't really care how how you get there to to do that. And it's 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 fucked up. That's gonna be the most political side you'll get from me in this video. But it's it's a very like you know ground floor thing. I mean, people can feel whatever about it. I'm not gonna tell you you're wrong. I'm just telling We're you what I think. Making profits. In general, you're right. Not every game, and I think that is one of the major changes here, is that unlike previously, where it seemed like if you worked for a AAA studio, no matter what game you made was going to sell, right? That's not the case anymore. Just look at what just happened with Suicide Squad, right? So things are changing, and more indie studios are getting all kinds of attention now. How does he know this? This is massively, like, dangerous. (laughs) Not not dangerous. Maybe I'm, I'm, I'm being hyperbolic about this, but... The the thing that I'm getting at is indie games are not profitable because they're they're a very small company. They have to like really like find ways to make their games work and and be financial. There's all these other stuffs that 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 gets involved in this. Again, I follow some people on Twitter that are game developers, and it's like I do read them because it's interesting to see like kind of what they go through or just seeing you know their opinion on stuff. And it's like it's semi interesting, you know, whatever. And it's like games are not easy you can't just make a game and then there you go you have to like do a lot there's a lot to it than that games for example like i just said pal world hell divers 2 these are games that now are are selling so well that's a good thing you want to have that competition and you want the triple a guys on their toes not thinking that everything they do will always be a slam dunk okay? but this is like dumb i mean this is a a, a fallacy but it's mostly just like an ideal dream where, yeah, if something doesn't sell, then the person will, will make a better product in turn. But that's never the case. Because companies will either see that, hey, this failed, we're just going to try again and do something more money safe. Or whatever. It's it's really like, you can't really anticipate how a company is going to react. Because they can take the wrong information from it. Like, he just did that news story about Axiom of, of Avium or whatever. And... EA used that to justify them leaning more towards uh, multiplayer, and that's going off the principle of this thing didn't sell, so obviously they want this. 
Like that's the basic fundamentals of what of what they're using. They're not gonna sit there and say, "Oh, so the problem maybe is that is the marketing or whatever." They're gonna look at that. They're just gonna look at this did not sell, therefore it failed. Like it's rare when a company fully understands it's not really this or that. It might be this other thing, because you can't really anticipate what they're gonna think or how they're gonna judge it. It's so stupid that I have to to explain this, but I just want to just illustrate the the stupidity of DSP as best I can. So everyone knows the the gravity of his stupidity. Okay. Okay. However, <clears throat> basically, basically, here's what people are saying because there's all these different analyses on this. Okay. And analyses. Everyone seems to be having different takes on it. All right. For example, let me just give you some perspective here. Oh, this is actually from Zuby Tech. Zuby. A very poignant tweet, I feel. Okay. Oh man, I I was part. I'm always terrified when he brings up someone from Twitter, because he finds the weirdest people to bring up. Like the only normal guy he he brought up was Jason Jason Trier, and I think Jason Trier. A lot of people have a lot of opinions about him. I'm not gonna like get into that. That's a <laughs> I'll wait for another day. But out of the people he brings up, it, it, he was like the only one. Two. Cost over two hundred and twenty million dollars to make. Horizon Forbidden West cost over two hundred and twelve million dollars to make. God of War Ragnarok cost over two hundred million dollars to make. Marvel's Spider Man Two. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay. Cost over three hundred million dollars to make. Okay. 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 So, each game is costing Where the money more go, Tim? and more uh, I mean, uh, and Sony? more and more to develop. Revenues are increasing. I mean, oh these games my are god, I hate this story time voice! Bye, and bye, and more. Like, dude, we're fucking, like, people. You don't need to tell us, like, you're telling little Timmy a, choo a bedtime story. I have to say choo-choo story. <laughs> For example, Marvel Spider-Man. Sold enough to turn a profit within like a week, right? However, what is the actual return on investment, right? Overall, right. how much money are they really making in the long run, right? Right. It's a good question. Good question. It might, it very well could be that back in the day, you know, we're talking the era of the PS2, right? The, the right. biggest console of all time. At least it was at one point. Who knows if a fucking shitty Nintendo console I'll sold it by now. But oh my god! Day, you know, we're talking the era of the PS2, right? The, the biggest console of all time. At least it was at one point. Who knows if a fucking shitty Nintendo console I'll sold it by Loves Nintendo! Loves Nintendo! He's a huge fan! Oh, a fucking stupid Nintendo product might have outsold the PS2. The precious PS fucking 2. This dude, this dude is... I, 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 I Someone on Twitter said, like, oh, he, he shits on the DS. I don't know. I'm like, huh? Really? I don't remember that. And now I see it. There's this random fucking, like, dog pile on Nintendo for no reason. This dude really loves Nintendo. This is in her fanboy talking, obviously. Now, but you see the point I'm making. Back then, development costs for these games were nowhere near this. But then they would sell a ton, and the, these. But you know what? Nintendo games didn't cost a ton to make. Hmm. Makes you makes you think, right? These would make insane profits on them. Now, if you have an insane budget, right, and this game takes so long to to make, and it comes out, even if it sells well, it still might not make that return on investment as the old days. And so now you've got to rely on having a library of games coming out. But you literally have DSP, this fucking guy that says, This year there's no games coming out. More games should come out. <laughs> okay. But how do you do that? More employees, more studios, more overhead cost. So the industry... Oh, yeah, that's the problem. Oh, it's that. Not, not like maybe they should have more realistic budgets or expectations and or whatever. No, it's... It's just that they have to pay these people. Okay. Is pushing for these giant experiences. Every video game needs to be 40 to 80 hours long. Every video game needs an open world with all of this content. It needs to have all... It's like a checklist of expectations. Whenever the era of PS4 and Xbox One, every game could now be open world because these consoles can handle it. 
But the question really was, or it is now, what's profitable for these companies and do the, does this game experience now warrant the amount of money that they're putting into it? Oh right. my god! I Take fucking game like I kind of I kind of hate how this guy's talking about this. Like, look, oh, we should uh analyze this from a business like angle, and it's like, dude, like, come on, you know these people like worked in the game industry, they got laid off and in droves. They sound like, oh, we're just gonna be laying off a few people. I mean, they shut down an entire studio. They didn't even like, oh, we're gonna keep some people on because we're just gonna get rid of the people that we don't need. It's just huge numbers. Whatever. Rising okay. West. Okay. Imagine if Horizon Forbidden West only cost $100 million to make, and instead of having 60-plus hours of content, it only had 20. But those 20 hours were streamlined, super fun, very well done, and it didn't have all of that extra open-world bloated content that most people don't even do. Would it have been a bad game? Would it have sold better or worse? It this probably, dude, I'll be honest. This dude literally was going... Like, look at his fucking Sonic... Oh, review. This game is $60. Or was it 50 Whatever. And it's like three hours long. This game is terrible and stupid. This dude is Mr. Let's blow up the game so we can say it's meaningful. And then when games start to do that, oh, these, this isn't meaningful. This is stupid. Okay. I think it would have sold the same. I think it would have actually sold just as much as the game did now. And they would have had a bigger return on investment. I'm just saying. Maybe what's happening... It, dude, it came out the same day or the same week of Elden Ring. Like, it just had an awful timing. Again. Too overbloated. You're spending so much money to develop them. And you're hiring so many people. And you got so much work being done that by the time the game comes out, it's great that it has all these features. But how many people are realistically really enjoying all of them? And how many people are going to spend a ton of money uh... on that experience? Most people will buy the game once they're done with it. They're not doing any microtransactions. You know what I'm saying? So a game like Madden, minimal effort, and then makes insane money every year. A game like God of War Ragnarok, it's a one-time buy. You're not going to spend any more money on that. How does he know Madden makes a good amount of money with microtransactions? How does he know that? How does he know that enough to make that, that claim? So you have to rely on it selling a ton. But has all that budget of 200 million dollars will it turn a profit right this is a pretty uh, an interesting thing you have to think about when you think about game development in the modern day now there's all these different takes on it okay okay so so <laughs> but what, what's his take you notice that we haven't gone to his take he's he's just telling us the news and other people's opinions what's his opinion see if he does a political channel, we will never get his opinion. At most, we'll just see this is the kind of stuff he's going to do. He's going to just complain when it's something that inconveniences him. Like, oh, we make, uh, we make DoorDash illegal. Uh, no one will DoorDash ever again. DSP will go on a little DSP politics channel. So, th get this. Seattle banned DoorDash. What a stupid idea. This government is fucked up and corrupt and evil. And then, like, if they do, like, a, if they pass a law, like, that affects women, LGBT, whatever, like, anyone else. Do you feel like, so, like, the, the government wanna, wants to do this? Now, I understand why. And then this side says this. And there has to be a middle ground where we have to decide what, what, what we do and what we don't do. So we, we all should be respectful. And that's it. That's what, what he would do. But when it's, like, something that affects him, we should go to war over it. Like, that's kind of the shit he's going to do. Because that's DSP. He can't have, be opinionated only when it's something that pisses him off or affects him. Obviously. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. You would think from all of Dang. these game studios laying people off. I mean, we just had, what, 900-some employees at Sony. Over 1,000-plus employees at Microsoft. Now 600-some employees at EA. You, and by the way, just think about that. That's 2,000-plus people in the games industry who have to find another job at another game company. Where else are they going to work, right? But is the, if the games industry right? is downscaling right now, where are they going to work? Because imagine if you worked at Microsoft. That's okay. I could get a job at Sony. Oops, Sony just laid off people. That's all right. I'll go work at EA. Oops, EA just laid off Oops. people. Time to, time to go work. with Nintendo. Right? It's pretty Nintendo is going to It's going to boom. In that industry. Um. But here's here's all those that people they could be making a lot Pokemon. Of realize. These companies are making profit. These companies are not destitute. 
These companies are not. Yeah, making- they're they're making money because they're saving money by not spending money on these employees. So it kind of just it sounds like maybe the budget stuff is kind of kind of like a uh, a little scapegoat, if you will. Out, but whatever. You know, money at all. In fact, it's quite the opposite. If you actually take a look at numbers, supposedly most of these companies are doing quite well. So then why are they downscaling? Because this is how American business works. It's scary oh, to man. think, but this is how it works. Now, I, I, I say American. Sony did it too, and Sony's a Japanese company. But the point it's I'm making greed. is that like I, this dude is so eager to shut on America. And it's like, you know, I'm not going to sit there and say, oh, we should all love like your country – with no question. I mean, be critical of it, sure, whatever. But this dude, it's like, it, it's kind of ridiculous. How much, how much, he he, he kind of like shits on America, but it's like in a weir- in weird ways. It's not like, uh, oh man, he really hates America. It's just like in, in funny, like stereotypical ways. Like, like it, he he hates America, like in the, with the same passion as a sitcom character making a buzz, a uh, uh, punchline about America. Like that, that's his, his like hate. That's how deep it goes. Hope that makes sense. I really feel like if they need to be more profitable, it's better to actually sacrifice employees' livelihoods, all right, to save money. Yeah. Or make more it's money. Greed. It actually results as profit. Greed. More profit. Greed is massively strong. And the thing people- that's silly, these be saying all this stuff, and I, I just feel this is conjecture, speculation, whatever the fuck you want to call it. But I think DSP would be that guy that would say we should lay off some people to save money. I guarantee he'd be the guy. He'd be the one. He's the one that would love to do it. Off, If you can believe it, that's how it works. They think that's a better option than actually having to make better products. I, I, I really wish that that I don't wasn't th- I, I don't think it's that, oh, oh, we don't want to make better products. It's just that why spend money to make product that may or may not make an investment when it's like in the grand scheme of things for these companies, it's not going to hurt them that much. It's going to be like, okay, whatever, but they're going to be able to like rebound easily. And they just, it's like, no, why, why do that? We could just lay people off. And that's, that's kind of it. It's, it's just whatever. I mean, but this is how it happens all the time. Okay. Where basically again, as I've already said, you're a number on a spreadsheet. You're a cog in a machine. And it, if it comes to the bottom line, like we got to make profit, profit, profit. We got to make maximum profit, profit. profits for our shareholders. So that way the, pro- the price profit, of the stock goes up. The company's valuation minimum, goes up. Uh, and then we make more money. Truth. And then we make more money. And then we make more money. That's what these companies are really in effect I mean, doing. like, the, and you know the other reason why I say DC would be the guy to lay off stuff? I mean, look how he handles his channels. He literally was like, I don't need to do uh, vlogs anymore. Cut that. I don't need to do uh, reviews. Cut that. But it's like he could do these things. And like even DSP Throwback, he doesn't need that channel to be successful because he lived off of one YouTube channel. Like he has one YouTube channel, and he's now telling us that he needs all channels to be profitable to be to be viable. Like it's just kind of bizarre. It's like he it's like he's paying for the channels. He's paying for the channel space. Okay. They don't care what games they're making anymore. The people who are running these companies have become corporate bigwigs. That's, these people on the boards of directors of these companies are not game makers. They don't play the fucking games. They don't care about what games they're making. They care about the money on the spreadsheet and how much money is in their pockets and how much money goes to the shareholders, how much more money can be made. And to some extent, I get that. Yes, it's a corporation. It has to I get basically that. make money. But at the same time, you are artistic i think i think it is they, they need to just accept being complacent with where they're at instead they're they're just they just want to be on the top and it's like okay why <laughs> in reality why that makes art well, not a product but whatever art. any company that makes again movies. he wants to he wants to complain about art but the thing is he wants to compare it to art but if you want to make it comparable to art to go back to neil Druckmann, then you have to also accept the painful art too you know what i mean television music theater it's art it's all optional entertainment and it is video games are the most profitable industry on the planet right now they make more money than everything combined oh man We're at one point do we realize sometimes it's not just about the money but these people don't want to hear that all they care about is the money so when you yeah. hear that the games industry 
is laying off all these people. Welcome well, they must to be the crashing, real world. Right? They're not. Like, this dude literally talks as if he was just born yesterday. And yeah, of course, it's not a crash because a crash would imply that game companies are doing bad. They're not doing bad. They're doing pretty good. So they're not really crashing. Maybe in, in a abstract way, like, oh, yeah, the quality of games are not to my liking and all this stuff. But like factually in finance land and all this stuff they're not they're not crashing like whatever they're they're making more money than ever they really are it's just that they don't care about the employees it used to be these studios cherished their employees because they knew that they needed those people to pump out the next game now and you know what it's funny you know this dude complained about neil Druckmann putting in like all this stuff oh i want to relax and all this stuff he hypes this his uh, channel for the same thing. Oh, come here and you'll get to relax. And we're fucking talking about layoffs and, and, and how fucked up it is. And it's like, you know, if you want to talk about it, sure, fine, do it, whatever. But don't come to us and say, oh, man, you want to avoid the real world? <laughs> uh, Hell, there's 2,000 people right and now. Again, floating in limbo. He's saying this stuff, but it's like, and then... Because, again, yeah, it's also one thing, like, if you want to talk about it, that's fine. At least offer some kind of take. And all this take is, is people are greedy. I get business is business. Like, the, these are, like, nothing statements. It's like, okay, yeah. Like, is that what you want? But it's like, you know, it's there's no interest in what's going on. He's just saying stuff. With no jobs, who anyone thinks they could just scoop up whenever they need them to make the next hot game and then fucking fire them again when they're done. That's how they're seeing it. That's not how to operate an industry. That's predatory, right? Yeah, That's man. literally predatory to an industry. <laughs> That's how a lot of jobs And this are. is just going to destroy uh -huh. the way that we see games be made. It's really going to screw stuff Dude, up I mean, for us. Again, if you follow a lot of game developers on Twitter, some of them will openly say that a lot of times they feel burnt out and they just didn't like the industry. Like... I follow one comic book artist, and they and she, and this person said like they don't want to they, they 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 kept telling people like look if you like something don't do it as a job because then you're gonna ruin it because this person like liked this one thing worked on it and then it was like oh man and just got exhausted from it. it's like and, and it changed kind of her perception of what she's working on and that's just and that that shit just happens like people can either stomach it but like when you work on something a lot and you're just doing stuff it's like. You could get burnt out, and D and DSP is acting as if that never happens. Uh. Um, I'm really seeing, sadly, this isn't a game crash, because there's no crash. The demand is higher than ever, and so are the profits. But I could see the entire way games are made changing in the future, right? Where you don't even have set dev teams anymore. You just have head-hunted contractors come in and make a I game. I like how he's saying this, but he's also like... There's a lot of weird, like, scary shit going on in the world of AI, and it's kind of like, I kind of don't like, I, I kind of, you know, you know my opinion, you know my opinion on AI, I'm going to try to keep keep this brief, but it's like, it kind, it kind of this gets me a little concerned, because a lot of these, to these video games have a lot of personal, like, care put into them, and all this stuff, and it's like, you see AI, and it's like, you know, I I, I kind of don't like having a program do stuff for, that is more, that's better suited for a person, you know? Like, and I feel like this is like, I feel that should not, that we shouldn't be doing this kind of automation level nonsense. And, and again, it's not like that a lot of these people are asking for like luxurious options. It's not like, oh, we want to be paid in private jets and, and liquid gold. It's like, you know, it's, it's just kind of dystopian and it's like come on man come on out man and then they dip because they can't rely on these companies to give them a career anymore because the people at top are greedy <clears throat> i just it's so obvious what's going on but it's like what do you do when you've created the entire business and industry to work like that because again it's not just the games industry it's so many different corporations are like this where they just don't care. There's no Man. morality to their decisions. A corporation. Dude, imagine if you're, like you're, you're, you're going, you're like depressed, you're worried about life, and you just tune into this guy's stream. You're, you're gonna like fucking freak the fuck out. To have morality because it's not a person, it's a business. Bullshit. Businesses Bullshit. are run by people. At some point, there has to be some kind of a morality code, a code of conduct. We say we're not just going no to one cares. Like people in the. Th this is so late. Like lame whatever you want to call it but like 
It's so clear that no one, no one cares about fucking morality. The the only morality they give a fuck about is like the obvious kind of shit. But it's like, come on, like when you have people that sit there and say, "Don't let a company call you family," like you kind of know that there's no such thing as morality because people just care about the almighty dollar, man. Fucking street, when we don't need them anymore because we wanted to increase our valuation on a spreadsheet because we wanted to make more money. That's ridiculous, right? Oh, uh, yeah, it's ridiculous. I don't know, man. I, To me, it sure sounds pretty evil, <clears throat> right? And here's the other problem with this. Oh, okay? there's another problem. When this is happening to the entire industry, this is not one company, this is not two companies, this is basically the whole industry this is happening to, correct? And then he gets up! And then he gets up! We're doing a professional fucking stream. And he... And this is a new thing he's been doing, and it, it it is it is so fucking rude and so fucking stupid. He just gets up unprovoked, and then he comes back, then tells you why he got up for. It. And it's like, dude, just wait. And this dude is like, oh man, I gotta do this, and he gets up and plays around. Like, dude, this is. And I said this before when he was getting up. I was like, yeah, this is gonna be a regular thing where he's just gonna take daily uh, breaks during pre-stream. So when this is happening to the entirety of See, the... See, now he just sits down, doesn't even say what he did. And it's like, imagine being an, an audible listener, an audio listener. You're going to think this dude like, had, to, had to like deal with something. ...at once. Here's what happens. People who normally would have said, oh, I want to get into that industry, and I'm a creative person, and I, I feel like I could really make great games, says, oh, I don't know if I want to do that. I mean, I got a family. I got to provide for them. There's no stability in game development. <clears throat> at what? any moment oh my god like this dude dude this is like i have a family i have a provide for them he, he he like lives in the 1920s when like only the man went to work like like people can work in families and all this other stuff i i i think we're even to the point where you know just having two jobs isn't enough but it's like of course game development is a risky venture any any venture to the entertainment industry is always a risky venture you're never gonna fully land on your feet you like it, it's it's rough and it's kind of like fucked up and it's it's all this other stuff that's that's involved. It's kind of like fucking I don't want to talk about it. Companies could just dump me and now I have no job and I can't do that. I got to find something more stable for fucked me and up. my family. So they don't go into game development. They do something else with their lives, right? So what ends up happening is the most talented people don't want to get into the industry anymore, and now game quality dips, and now games just become a commodity, something you buy for a a meaningless few hours of pleasure i mean that's kind of that's kind of but that's what he wants honestly in reality that's the world dsp wants every complaint he had about any video game oh i need to feel happy i need to have fun and all this other stuff and now he's saying oh well all these games are going to be focusing on that the shit you want this dude is so it, it's so, he's so lame he just wants to be part of the conversation and he doesn't give a fuck he doesn't give a fuck what he believes in or pleasure out of it is to dump more money into it with a microtransaction right and we lose that era of the big game blockbuster that's a meaningful game that's you know resonates with you forever instead it's just ah it's just a, a fuck around experience here i'm gonna play for we he needs to grab the controller to do this a few hours to kill some time done shake your what did you play today i don't even know i don't know what i play this dude it, it's it's so it's so annoying you know, this this guy, more and more, and I say, I say this almost every video, it seems, he just finds new ways to be obnoxious. Like, dude, how is this ende endearing or bearable? He's sitting there like, well, you know, people are buying games, and I don't know what they played. It's like, dude, you're, you're spending $70 on a video game, and you don't know what you bought? Like, dude, come on. I just fucked around, I killed some time, right? That's what'll happen. And isn't that what you do in video games anyway? You kill time? Like, you're literally doing nothing of value playing a video game. And it's it's just lame. He talks about things as values and, and this and that. Like, he talks like a businessman. And he's like, oh, these people care about their spreadsheets. Dude, you do the same shit. You're talking about getting value. Value for your money. Value for the game you buy. But, like, what at what cost? Quality should shine more than value. Correct? Like...
there's stuff that people can stomach for how much they pay for a game and all this other stuff, which is why some people may find some games, you know, valued at this at that price over this other price. But this dude is like, man, soon video games are going to care about the value and not like meaningful experiences. But when you have people like him, that's like, oh, this game, oh, this game doesn't have anything meaningful. He avoids all these other games because they're knockoffs. But those are also made by other developers. And he doesn't give a give a fuck about them. Unless he knocked off a Nintendo game. Nintendo knockoffs are cool and fun. But knockoffs from FromSoft? Oh, we can't play those. Those are, ew, gross. Oh, man, these poor developers are all going to lose their jobs, man. But this dude only plays AAA slop. He's the king of slop. And this dude is it has the gall to say, Oh, I only care for meaningful games. Okay. The entire industry will just be fucking around. Instead of actually caring about big game experiences to have meaning. You won't have the big blockbusters with epic stories, groundbreaking gameplay and graphics. Buzzwords. Seven thousand times with a new Buzz skin Buzzwords of nothing but nonsense. With more microtransactions attached. This to dude. It. That's the future of the games. Meaningful, robust. Like, what was meaningful about Spider-Man 2? Oh, because a dude talked about people who died. Okay. Industry, if we let this happen, and if we let these companies do whatever they want, you know? For ever, every single one of these fucking big CEOs of these game companies that act like they're some kind of a rock star celebrity, when in reality, they're just a money grubber, right? We just let this happen. So, and you might say, well, how do we fix this? Oh, <clears throat> With your wallets. Man. And then nope. we get the massive meme. Oh, uh, yes! You don't want people to lose their jobs? Stop buying games. Because obviously, these game companies are going to realize, oh, we should keep these people on board and make another game. And sink more money. Obviously. Why didn't, why didn't they think of that? Because that's clearly what they're going to do. This dude cannot be real. He, he's 45 years old, and he's like... Acts as if companies are going to think like this. Dude, let's say the Nintendo Switch OLED did not sell. It sold one unit, one little dev one little console. You think Nintendo's going to sit there and say, oh, we should have done Super Switch. No, they're going to sit there and say, oh, no one gives a fuck about OLED screens, so we don't need to invest in that. Or whatever. They could just make a judgment like that. They're more than willing to make that, that accusation or whatever. And this dude is like, oh, just don't buy stuff. Oh, yes, this is this is tantamount of these fucking companies saying, oh, you want to save the environment? Better recycle. Meanwhile, you have all these other companies doing mass pollution and all this other bullshit. Like, it, it's comical. It's like, uh, like a few years ago, didn't like a, uh, a gas company or whatever have like a thing explode in the ocean? And it's like, oh, this is a massive problem. And then it's like, oh, yeah, if we recycle, this will stop. Like, no, obviously, like, it, it's just. Either there needs to be more done, but it's like, you know, no one wants to do it because they don't see the value, man. But it's so dumb to see this. Oh, just don't buy stuff. Yeah, that, because they're, they're going to, like, make good games again if you don't buy stuff, right? Buy games from these companies who are doing this to their employees. Stop fucking buying EA microtransaction sports games. Just stop. Don't buy Madden. Don't buy FIFA. Don't spend money on fucking Ultimate Team. If you stop well, people don't supporting care. the bad practices that allow them to act like this... They but again, he's also talking to this to people who are not even tuning in because they don't give a fuck. If people are buying Madden, I don't think they care. ...will stop the actions. But if you reward the bad actions, they will continue with them. Right? The best way for... Again, I want DSP to, like, shorten the pre-stream. Does that mean that he should get less tips? Well, guess what, idiot? When he gets low, slow support, he can't figure out why. So he's confused, and then he's like, well... It is what it is. I guess we gotta put another uh another tip goal or he'll just guilt trip them. But why why isn't oh maybe I should get a green screen? No, he can't do that. He needs money now. Pokemon to improve is to stop buying every shitty Pokemon game on the Switch that runs like dirt. Just fucking stop buying them. What if right? they don't care? What don't if they enjoy the game? The bad behavior and then they won't continue it. And, you know, but, someone also mentioned this uh, on Twitter. <laughs> so, CSV is like, Twitter, I'll bring it up. And someone, and someone's, like, talking about the uh, last Airbender live-action series and saying that um, 
pretty much like the, the the reaction on Twitter is like a small pool of people versus the people who actually watch this kind of shit. So it's not necessarily that the people who are watching the last Airbender series isn't necessarily just hate watchers. They could just be people who are just tuning in, seeing what this is, whatever. And that always happens with anything, like anything in in general. Like Twitter is not like the the place where everyone on the planet is talking. It's like a pool of people and it's like you know whatever how many people on twitter are really saying this and all this other stuff like it's that kind of thing our industry is so weird we reward the bad behaviors we buy the things that we say we don't want we support like i didn't watch the last airbender tv series and yet it did a good a good eh. it did good ratings wise or whatever the fuck netflix measures does that mean that, like, I watched it? No, it just means that other people did. I mean, again, y you can't control everyone. Not everyone's going to care, Not every and all this other stuff, which is, like, insane to me. He's low-key blaming gamers for people losing their jobs and not these fucking companies that are doing it. Like, it's not the consumer. That's the problem here. Like, and this dude talked about corporate America and how greedy it is, yet we're blaming the gamer now. Now it's the gamer. If you don't want people to lose their jobs, stop buying games. Again, literal nonsense. Like, oh, you want to change the, you want to uh, save the climate? Recycle. Clearly that's what, that's, that's going to save everything. Not that these other bigger problems. No, just recycle and, and the world will be fine. Things that we say are harmful. The most profitable games ever are microtransaction laden games like GTA Online and Fortnite. Yet we say that's not the experiences we want. We want these epic games with big stories and all Again, tons like of meaningful why can't these two things coexist? Again, see the problem isn't the fucking games or the people. It's the fucking companies. These companies need to understand they're like they can make multiple games. Maybe they don't need to make these games over inflated budgets and they can have a better output on smaller budgeted games. And think back to when um, uh, Ubisoft wanted to have, like, or was it EA? Whatever. They wanted to have, like, an indie game, like, portfolio. And it's like, okay, what happened to that? That that Those incentives are now gone pretty much. But why don't they do that? Why don't they just invest in smaller budgets? No, we got to do big budget stuff and all this other stuff. So it's the gamer's fault, obviously content but then we buy we spend all our money on the junk so what do you think they're going to keep making junk what do you think is going to happen they're going to dump more employees because they see them as disposable he bought junk too he bought junk too and but he's an always hide behind i'm a streamer and i am all i do all this stuff for you but what about these other people that may be streamers too what if they're streamers what are they bought these games for other reasons you know the and, and I usually used to play Netherrealm games just just with a friend. But I, I, I told them, like, I'm not buying Mortal Kombat 1. I, I ain't touching that. Fuck, I'm done with Netherrealm. Because it's it, it, it got to the point where I'm just over how fucking, like, stupid these comp that this company does with their games. It's like, I don't need to play these games anymore. I'll stick with Guilty Gear. Thank you very much. This is what will happen. Right? So, yeah, that's all I have to say is uh, it's it's a symptom of an industry where directly the consumers are financing the bad behaviors and allowing these companies, yes, enabling them. Of course, but if they're making a lot of money, right, why would they be laying people off? Like, this doesn't make any sense. And, and again, how, how, what's the correlation? I bought this game. Oh, you supported laying people off? Like, what? Okay. These awful things to their employees. We need to change that. We need to stop spending money on crap. Just stop entirely. No stop. more excuses. Oh, but I. But every time I boot up GTA Online, it's such an awesome social. You know this dude is so lame. He he. During the fucking Hogwarts bullshit, he was like, oh, uh, so, you know, let people enjoy games and all this other stuff. People worked hard on these games. Oh, and all this other nonsense. And now he's mocking people who have fun with Fortnite and all this stuff. Uh, Phil, other people worked on that game. They're just enjoying the game that they made. And it's like, obviously he just hates these games. But it's like, it's not the games or the people that are the problem. And he's, he keeps blaming them, but it's not.
Like, this dude. Like, man. And I guarantee if you tell him about stuff about, like, oh, if you support Hogwarts, you're just validating J.K. Rowling's beliefs and it harms a whole community. He would tell you to shut up and that's not the case. And it's like, you know, it's whatever. I'm, You know, whatever. But this dude is so fucking lame about this stuff. He's like, oh, man, you know, you just stop buying this stuff. But, you know, but he hates when people told people to stop buying Hogwarts. But he's telling people to stop buying and enjoying other games because he feel he sees it as a negative to the community. But how does he know? Why can't these games exist with other games? ...experience. Fucking turn the game off and go out with your friends and spend money at a real business. All right? What if I don't have money? Like, you know, he, he keeps saying that these children play fucking Fortnite. But how does he know that these, these kids are loaded with cash? They don't have jobs, DSP. Kids don't have jobs. You know that, right? You know that we don't have child labor, right? Correct? You know it's illegal, correct? I mean, I don't know. Maybe DSP doesn't know. Oh, fuck. He may not know about child labor. Oh, shit. That explains a lot. Go to the bar. Go to the restaurant. Yeah, go go to the bar. You know, like, hey, you're not much of a drinker. Go to the bar anyway. Uh, or if you are, go to the bar, drink. Hey, hop in the car. Hey, you can still drive. You can still, uh, you know, pff, open your eyes so you're good to go. Right? Correct? Why stay home and be safe? Correct? He tells us every day to be safe. <laughs> be safe. Okay, so if I play a video game, that's being safe. No, go out! Go outside and, and play in traffic. Uh, go hang out, go play sports, go fucking whatever. Turn off the fucking microtransaction game where every moment you're paying them more money. Stop rewarding them for bad behaviors. Turn off the FIFA he's, he's so proud of this statement, but it's a stupid statement. Again, these people who are buying or supporting these games, they either don't care or they're having fun and they're like, hey, I don't give a fuck, you know, whatever. Again... It's really why, like, every developer that's been talking about these layoffs, they're not sitting there saying, These people, they bought, they, they supported Fortnite, so I lost my job. Oh, my God. Like, because it's not, like, the right person to complain to. Because these people are just going to buy stuff that they want to buy. And that's not the problem. The problem is these companies and how they run them. And it's so funny to me that this dude... When Bobby Kotick was was a a, a problem, these people were going, "Oh, the management, the management, the management." All this stuff about the sexual misconduct and all this other all this other bullshit. But when these other companies have mismanaged their co they're coming to the point where they're just laying people off for benefits. Oh, the, the management's not the problem; it's the gamer. Like this dude is, he really is. Like, he only supports corporate as long as they're not uh, sex abusers. If they don't do sex stuff, you're good in his book. Do whatever. The moment you do some sex stuff, oh, uh, get fucked. Because, obviously, that's the only truly evil thing. Nothing else in life. Okay. Shit, the fucking t mad and nonsense. And go support real people. Spend real life time with your friends. Stop fucking around online. Because this is why this is happening to the industry. All right. Literally, the moment you spend money on junk, you're rewarding a CEO sitting in a boardroom who just cut 600 jobs because they said, we're going to focus. But what's the correlation? People can say there's a correlation with like the boom of season passes and all this stuff. All they want about fucking people who buy games. But, you know, even then, I would argue it's probably these companies. They see this and they're like, OK, sure. Why not? Whatever. But he's blaming consumers for just buying stuff that they just want to enjoy. And they have fun with it. And this dude in this same pre-stream said, I just want to play games and have fun. I just want to have fun, man. And now he's saying that all, that all these people who are just having fun, they need to shut the fuck up and leave. And this is this is a great freeze frame. Oh my god. I I I don't know how I did it. This is this is the one. I'm gonna try to make this the thumbnail in some way. In some fun way. Lean into our big IPs with microtransactions in them. You did it. Stop. Or else this will just get worse. I don't know what else to say. What? Who just cut 600 jobs because they said, we're going to focus and lean into our big IPs with microtransactions in them. You did it. I mean, again, DSP did not, like, wake up and, re and, and like, he saw them say they didn't have faith in a Star Wars game. And it's like, oh, it must be the Fortnite people. Like, okay. Stop. 
or else this will just get worse. I don't know what else to say. You have to stop the fucking madness and stop the bad behavior. Okay. Okay. That's what I have to say about that. And if you disagree, you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <clears throat> uh, SD chargers, and I went like this, and it didn't break. It was so. Oh my god, he's talking about food. I think you're all right, Phil. You have a thicker skin and bigger balls than most keep- What? Start off with a $2 tip. I think Big you, balls. you are- I think you're all right, Phil. You have a thicker skin and bigger balls than most keyboard warriors on the internet. Oh my Wish god. Wish I could tip more, but I just can't afford that much. You bring a smile to my face and I look for- Keyboard warriors, your videos. Uh -huh. keep being What are you, you, buddy? Much love from Australia. So it sounds like an anonymous $2 tip to start today. Thank you so very much. I appreciate that. And oh, I, I've always said this, and I'll just reiterate. Never, ever feel bad or apologize. If you're contributing to my content, supporting it. Don't say, feel oh, bad. I'm sorry it wasn't worth it. Again, That's the fact that, that, he, that he has to say this, I, I, I mean, I don't think people should, should tell their audience that this, Absolutely you know ridiculous. what I mean? The reason that I'm here and still able <laughs> it to says a lot about that DSP. A one person coming by and going, I received another two dollar tip. Another anonymous one, just two in a row. Two anonymous two dollar tips. Okay. 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 Oh, let's. See. Does this, this say anything else? This wig. Today. Um. Whatever. I. I. I guess I. Well, I covered what I wanted to cover. Uh. The wig. He never got to wear it. By the way. Sad day. He never got to wear it. Uh, I'm gonna do a small little uh, clip check. Let's see. Did anyone upload any any clips? Dead on arrival. Oh man, DSP is screwed. Uh oh. Oh wait a second. Before I do that, I need to subscribe to Raw Phil on on this channel. Uh, everyone keeps asking me. <laughs> I have another YouTube channel called Theo Does Videos. Theo does videos. That is a that is a channel I made. That was my first YouTube channel. Uh, the reason why I made this channel, some of you may not know, is uh, when I started doing DSP videos. I think Tevin got uh, striked by Leanna, I think, because of the, of the uh, Panda Lee door. And I was like, oh shit, I don't want this channel to go because I, you know, that's my personal channel. I, you know, it, you know, it means something to me, man. So I was like, okay, well, I don't want this channel to, like, go away because of DSP stuff, obviously. So I made this one, and now I kind of just do this upload videos, actually, in reality. Uh, so that's why I have two channels. So if you see either channel in anything, that's it's it's me. Uh, you can only tell because, you know, you go to, you go to one of them, you'll see videos. You, you, you'll see them. But whatever. Uh, I don't recommend it. My, my videos on that channel are, are very cringe. I did indoors of them, so, you know, it's it's rough. Okay, man. I, I wanted to end it because I kind of want to get din din the but... Army the it's the Hate Army, army bro. The I can't army. believe it. Shout out to Hate. Shout out to Hate. Shout out to Hate. Shout out to Hate. Oh, no. Shout out for Shout Hate. Out for hate. <laughs> oh, man. Good morning, everyone. Welcome <laughs> to an extended <laughs> streaming week. Oh, featuring God. an incredibly hype new release. That is right. Today, ladies and gentlemen, is the premiere of Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, the game we've all been waiting for. Um, And I welcome you here to the show, and I welcome you to seven straight okay, days. We're, we're just going to skip ahead. Stuff, all right? I'm not, okay. I want pre-stream stuff. <clears throat> okay. So that's all we've got so far on the YouTube side. Again, guys, please, today, if ever you were going to support the streams, today would be a great day to do it. The last day of, of February, and this would definitely definitely help. Oh wait! All right, all right. Ready to start again, guys? Remember today, if you can support my streams, please do. That would help me. And what's funny is, it's probably in this clip too, and I skipped over it. But he said he would consider making the cloud wig one hundred and fifty dollars. And you know what? To me, Theo theory time. I think he said that because he got a hundred dollars a lot on uh, Baldur's Gate three, and I think he was kind of. Testing the waters to see if he was gonna get 150 again, and if he did, he was gonna use that to validate him wanting it to be 150. But since over time he never got massive whales, 
He walked it back because it's insane. He wanted 150 for a fucking wig. Telling right now because month end, last day of the month to help out. But he said he'd consider last month and a half, and anything today helps a ton to increase it. Um, and if we do hit the goal today, the cloud strife wig. So there you go. All right, let's begin. <clears throat> but he was like being very obviously negative about the we're wig. in the intro, and I thank you all for ch chilling with me here and joining me for the premiere of Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Much, much more to come. I'll see you in the next parts, and thanks for watching. If you are watching this, I mean, this is part one. I hope you like it. Please consider it, supporting Phil. the playthrough in some way. If you're watching on demand, you can do a super thanks on the video or a tip in the description. If you're here live, you guys know what you can you guys do, know. and uh, you guys I'll see you in part up. two. All right. Real quick, I'm just going to stand up and stretch my legs. I'll also get Sarah on the leaderboard. Get, get yes, guys, Sarah please, if there. you're enjoying so far the chill vibes and uh, the fun, please... Support the stream today in some way. All right, it's the final day of February, and it would help a lot if you guys could support the stream. Currently, dude, this dude uh, got like showered with Roy Barnes fucking tips, uh, super chats. Not good enough, too slow. Oh, we're ten bucks away from the tier one tips goal. Obviously, the goal would be to hit them today, so I can no wear way. my Cloud Strife wig as donated by a fan. It looks like a dead dog. Yeah, this whole. Oh man. Ah, it's terrifying. Anyway, Remember, guys, he has adults we'll as viewers. That today. In the meantime, in the meantime, I need to stand up and stretch for a second. Let me just do that. That's right. We do the cloud, the cloud workout. Oh man, okay. great, great so, segment. Squat and stand. Squat and stand. Yeah, I'm squat sure he's doing this. Squat and stand. Squat and stand. Squat and stand. Okay. <laughs> I'm actually doing it. Squat I was doing it on and camera, stand. but I can't fit over here. Squat I can't do it on and camera. Stand. There you go. I'm See, doing, I, I I'm doing the cloud exercise. Not a great, great go. squat, but you know, I. Squat stand. I didn't even like. I think they call it, like army squats. I don't fucking remember it. Yeah. I hate the Oria. Like that makes that that that. That kind of commentary can go go to hell. It's good. Oya and Oi and I just did it. Bullshit. Can't do it here though. The chair's in the way. I can't show you. Yeah, you can't move the chair. You can't the glutes, like. That's right. Got to work on the glutes. Do this. You can't do any of that. That that's too hard. That's too hard. All right. I gotta blow my nose. Hold on. Dude, 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 dude. He walks back down. Okay, I gotta blow my nose. Gets up again. Professional. Very efficient. Couldn't do it when he was up, right? Oh, he was too busy squatting. That's right. Oh. Oh. Wow, this is meaningful. Wow. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, okay. oh. <clears throat> oh, man. Oh, man. Look at that little motion. It's like a dude, like, oh, tightening okay. his tie. Like, look at look at it. It's <clears throat> being petty. Being petty right now. Puts it on and does the little this. It's, like, it's really what like... What are my thoughts like, on the milking this. Final Fantasy VII turning it into a trilogy that costs $210? Well, you could either have that or you could have... Oh, Three more iterations man. of Final Fantasy 16. So which would you prefer? Uh, DSP, you bought this game, and uh, now Square Enix is gonna lay off people. So good job, you 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 did good by to do this. <laughs> the... All right, everyone, we're back. Part two. Hojo says it's all good. <laughs> anyway, I received a fifteen dollar tip from Dan the Man. Thank you, Dan the Man. Oh boy! Tip this uh, this morning, I appreciate that very much. I say this, this morning, morning, it's the afternoon. Okay. Today's a weird day for me. I'm all thrown off time-wise and everything. It's so yeah. funny. He started the, so with that, the old time ends goal, early. He's gonna glass his time. Remember, he's gonna start hit. early and if end on like at today, 4 p.m. Or I will put on this incredibly authentic cloud oh, strife. Man. I I. Ring. It looks so. He kind of authentic. I think he lost. He, he lost where the front is. Now, the other thing that's funny about this, it came with a hairnet. This dude does not grasp why you may want that on his head. 
Because he's probably going to put the wig on it on itself and not the hairnet. The hairnet is meant so that, like, it can stay on your head. But he's like, so the hairnet is only for, like, if you have fucked up hair. And it's like, no, no, you put it on when you want to put the wig on so it stays in place and it's not, like, going to, like, fly off. I don't think I've ever seen another authentic hairdo just like this one. There you go. But we have to hit the tip skull. We'll see what happens. Okay. But I don't think DSP is that bright. I don't think they're going to figure it out. Who's going to glass this time? But he called it like shitty. He said it was a shitty. Uh, uh, looks at the camera to put the the, the, the glasses on too. For the record, I haven't even tried the wig on, so I don't know. I have no idea even how tried fit, it even on. Will. Didn't I do even have a try. Giant head. It's huge. It's like a oh watermelon. My God. But anyway, thanks yeah, for watching. Shit. Final Fantasy VII Rebirth playthrough part two. I hope you're enjoying, and I will see you all in the next part. Okay. Okay. It is time for a brief break for me to pee. So I'm going to mute the mic and go pee and come right back. Oh, guys, boy. one more hour now. And then after that hour, guys? we're adjourning early, as you know. That's why I started early today. But I'm coming back tonight, 6.45 p.m. Pacific time, for another two and a half hours, likely, tonight on the late stream. Remember, I I, I, I kind of hope that this is par for the course for Final Fantasy. And then he's going to have to accept the fact that Baldur's Gate 3 is the breadwinner. Because, remember, he... He, I guarantee you he's going to go through the fucking rant. I don't want to be a Baldur's Gate 3 streamer. I want to be a variety man. Meanwhile, he did like two weeks of back-to-back -back Baldur's Gate 3. Support the stream. I'm going to put this on for the last hour, but uh, I don't know. We're only at $55 in tips. You know, the hat goal is 100 So if we hit 100 bucks, I'll put on my Cloud Stripe wig as donated by a fan and see how it looks. Doesn't really look like Cloud Strife, in my opinion. I'm just saying. He, but that's you know, the important. thing is, you, you guys realize the fact that he's doing this constantly is kind of fucking up the hair. Like, it's not going to be as good as it, as it was out of the box. He's kind of already fucking it up. So it's going to be massively funny whenever he gets, gets the money. All right. I'll be right back. Get the we'll money. The get the paycheck. Get the wig. Oh man, yeah, get okay. Dude, he he like walks like a like he's a fucking geriatric. It's kind of crazy. He he walks as if he's made out of paper mache. Like if he walks funny, his skin is gonna collapse and he's gonna fall to the floor. Like he's fragile. Like his bones are made of glass. Okay, hey army, why did you do this to me? You do something artistic and you do something like this, man. Oh, but this should be more meaningful. Make it more meaningful. Hey, Army, just make the vid good. <laughs> All right, guys. Final hour. Again, <laughs> last chance to support the stream and see the Cloud Strife wig here on the premiere last stream. Last time. And then after this, tonight I'm playing more on the late stream. Um, obviously, it kind of stinks. We're still in the intro, but what can you do? They what can you do? This lengthy intro for the flashback sequence. So, but I think we're about to finish oh, it right now. Man. So we're at the end of it. Okay. Is basically what kept the village of uh, uh, Who's renting it? What now? I mean, the whole place is pitch black. I uh, I already told you that that this hat, this this wig, the the cloud wig is the hat goal. So if we hit the tier two tips goal today, I'm, I'll put on the that for the rest of the stream. You think he's <clears> yeah? Now he's not. Something? He's not gonna say 150 because like so, he's not getting it. I guarantee you, he was, he was testing the, the waters. Because he was probably anticipating that he was going to get the Baldur's Gate 3 tippers. They'll be confused. Give him another 100. He'll have 150. And then he can say, see, guys, I got 150. So you guys want this as the hat? In combat? You want this to be 150. All right. Well, I think this is honestly a good place to end it. You know, I think... Ah! Oh, shit. Ah! No. Ah! One minute, man. Ah! Calm down. Ah! It's, it's just a scream. I'm gonna kill myself! No, I'm gonna don't, be don't do that! From the back! No, you, you, I'm gonna kill myself! He's gonna play Bonus Gate 3 next week! You know, three hours. I'm playing more tonight. So, I hope that all everyone who's here live, obviously, we just, literally, we just finished the intro. There's so much going on. There's people dancing over there. Look at this. There's people synchronized dancing over there. I would oh love to God. go over there right now and check it out. I just don't have time, you know? He oh, had no time worry. when the best group was on the line tonight. playing Paper Mario. See what they're doing over there. They look absolutely ridiculous. Look at them dancing in the background. You see them, right? 
Okay. <laughs> this is like some TikTok viral dancing meme in the background. You know, there, Final the, the time he's what doing all this, he could have checked it out. Anyway, um, initial impressions: the graphics are outstanding. The story is the story of Final Fantasy VII. Besides the fact that, oh uh, no, they changed it. Remember? You know what? This dude was like, "This ain't wow, man! I can't wait for a rebirth." They changed the story. It's not gonna be like the game, dude. It's Final Fantasy VII story. Huh? Thought they changed it. Different what? scenario, and we don't know if that oh, that can't scenario. be this scenario because Aerith is with us. So oh, he's in man. some other dimension. When is he gonna cross over with ours? We, I guess we don't know yet. Dude, this dude is such a multiverse slop monster, and he fucking shat on Starfield for it and said multiverse is lame and lazy. And look at him now. Look at him. He's gobbling it up. He's like, dude, multiverse? Uh, other dimension? Other other realities? Wow. But he fucking said this stuff was lame. But now he's gobbling it up because it has the the slop that he loves. Reference slop. He gets the point and say, I know what that is. Um, Wait a minute. Honestly, the combat right now was so basic dude, in the dude, intro. Dude, I'm so glad when I'm playing Persona 3 Reload. I'm not saying like, dude, 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 where's Metis? Why is Metis not here? What? Whoa, whoa, man, this is so different. The youngster is here. Hard to call. I get the feeling the combat will be better. Like right now, I think the combat was basic for a reason, because that was the intro, but now hopefully we'll get the real team working together with synergy and actually using magic and stuff. Synergy, we'll just button mashing. You magic, know? I remember the combat of the first game being somewhat button mashy, but you know, being more complex than that too. So, uh, okay. Oh yeah, and definitely oh, yeah. the music, right? The music is oh, outstanding. The music. Listen oh. to this music. Listen to the good. music, so, baby. So far, initial three hours, you know, I like what I pretty see. Good, pretty I'm good, pretty good. I, I can slop it up. Com. This will be an exciting thing to do tonight. And wow. then continue on with the story. Hopefully get to our first missions and stuff. So I want to say thanks to the audience here. You guys were great. You were a fun, chill audience. For those watching on demand, I certainly hope that you're enjoying the playthrough. If you could, uh, you know, do me a favor these first few parts. Leave some comments. Like the videos if you're enjoying them. Uh, possibly support the playthrough with a super thanks or a tip. And uh, well, please give him money more later today. Give him money. Final Fantasy VII Rebirth playthrough. Thank you all. Playthrough. I'll see you next. Oh yeah. We'll see you for what's next later tonight. See you. Okay. All right, no, guys. we're still not so, done. We're not yes, out I apologize of the. That sadly, goal of the I could not do my full length stream today. I got to get going. All right. But I'll be back tonight. Did he do the same amount? Time, that he was, whatever. For another two to two okay, and a half but... hours. Of Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. The, the later stream tonight is the usual time. It's not going to be a skewed time or anything like that. For those who did support the stream, thank you. Uh, oh sadly, we didn't get the, the, the wig. And I thought, being this the premiere stream of the game, I thought it would be a shoe-in A shoe -in. for the wig. And no. So maybe tonight, you know, it's the same as the you hat. Know, you know what's so, so funny about Baldur's Gate 3? He fucking sits there and says, I can't play all these JRPGs. I can't play RPGs. What's he playing? JRPGs and Baldur's Gate 3. Hmm. And yet, Baldur's Gate 3 is the one that makes the most money. The hat goal, the wig goes on. Uh, hopefully, maybe tonight we'll see it. Maybe okay? what he should do is balance it out. Maybe, you know, maybe they're not giving you money because they, they don't like the fact that uh, you canceled Dundoku Island. So they're not rewarding the bad business. Or that they want uh, more Baldur's Gate 3. And since you're not giving it to them... They're not going to support. Maybe if you give them more variety, they'll support it more. And they're just not supporting the bad business. I think that's what's going on here. In the meantime, I hope you all chill out and have a good... Or maybe uh, they want a green screen. Maybe here. that's what's going on. They're I'll not supporting it because it's not a green and, screen. Uh, and get going on my, my stuff here. And I'll be back uh, tonight for the real stream. Because, you know, we had to get through the intro there. Which, I, I liked it because I didn't play the demo. People were saying that's what the demo was. You know, I didn't play the demo. So, for me, that was good. But I know uh -huh. I guess a lot of you played the demo. Wow. So. People play the demo? Uh, all right. So, all everyone. Right. All right. Enjoy the break. I hope to see you tonight. I'm not going to enjoy the more break. more Final Fantasy VII. I'm right? not going to enjoy it. I'm actually playing it again tomorrow as the daytime stream, too. And that'll be all new stuff as opposed to just the intro. So, all right. I'll see you all, all tonight. Right. Have a good break. Peace out, everybody. Have a good, have a good break. We're on break, guys break time all right uh i think that's the only new clip i don't think uh 
yeah that's that's it that's that's it okay everyone thank you for watching this video uh hope you enjoyed it it was a fun one i hope to see you guys next time i may stream persona 3 reload tonight or tomorrow i don't know i'll see what happens but thanks for watching see you guys next time uh bye bye time to skedaddle on out of here <laughs>